Ba-ba-bum. Let's make sure we mute that. Hey, Clary. Hey, Paige. And hello, Josh. Okay. Hey, Peter. Okay. Okay. All right. And so we're live streamed and uh, recording, and it's all yours, co chairs. I'll make you co hosts while you're talking. Okay. I'm going to talk first, Kay. Yes, I'll that'd be great. Intro. Good evening, everybody. The time is 6 29 p.m. on Thursday, May 12th, 2022. My name is Michelle Parker, and along with Kay Carpin, please wave Kay, I'm the co chair of the Community Board 7 Manhattan Preservation Committee. We are here to, today to hear the presentations by three separate applicants to the Landmarks Preservation Commission. This is the second meeting of the Preservation Committee this month. Thank you for all being here and for your steadfast perseverance and hard work. The mandate of our committee is to review matters prior to consideration by LPC for its appropriateness to the historic district or individual landmark. It is our policy and intention to draw up the resolutions this evening, which will then be submitted to a vote at the CB7 full board meeting on June 7, 2022. The resolutions are then forwarded to the Landmarks Preservation Commission, where it is responsibility of the LPC to make the final decision on your application. Applicants are responsible for telling us this evening, please, their scheduled date at LPC. And FYI, typically one uh, member of our committee goes to the Landmarks LPC meetings. Uh, our committee and the CB7 body is advisory. Our resolution is uh, a recommendation that can be accepted in whole or part or not at all by the LPC. Uh, but before, everybody okay? Uh, be, uh, before I explain the procedure of this meeting, I would like to introduce the committee members to you. And we'll start with uh, Mark Diller, if you wanna wave, and Madge Rosenberg, who is taking the minutes tonight, thank you. Josh Cohen. Clary Newelt, Paige Cowley, Peter Sampton, my co-chair Kay Carpin, Jay Adolf, Sue Schwartz, and I think that's everybody from the committee. We have a couple of non-committee board members. Madeline Innocent, please wave your, thank you. Uh, who else is? That's it for non-committee board members. Okay, just Madeline is here. All right. Um, now that you know a lot of the community board, I will explain the procedure for this evening. Uh, the applicant has uh, about 15 minutes to make their presentation. The committee can deliberate, uh, will uh, ask questions, can ask questions during your application and then thereafter. If uh, necessary, members of the public and or non-committee board members may speak for two minutes each. And then we'll go, the issue will go back to the committee to draft the resolution. All right, this evening we have, as I said, three applications and we'll hear from the first one, 257 Central Park West. This is an application for a certificate of appropriateness for the installation of a roof deck and greenhouse structure and an increase in the height of an existing elevator overrun. Could you please, uh, applicant, tell us who you are, say and spell your name, even though we can read it on the um, on the fit on the on our computers. Uh, and, and Madge may sometimes ask you to slow down a little to get all the information. Thank you. Who's here for two five seven Central Park West? Hi. Um, thank you so much for your time. Um, my name is Anupam Lada. That's A N U P A M. Um, last name's L-A-D-H-A. Um, I'm here representing the board of directors of 257 Park West. Um, I'm the president of the board and I'll let my colleagues um, introduce themselves, but Tosun Lim um, is, is on uh, as well. He's waving right now. And our architect, uh, Gero Gamusian from, from GGA Architects is on as well. So we thank you um, for uh, giving us giving us your time this uh, this evening. 
Excuse me, Michelle and Kay. There's yeah, a Carol, so. Carol Morrow who has her hand up. I'm not sure if that's about this application or another. Um, yeah. Carol, uh, can you unmute yourself and tell us <clears throat> what, who you are? You, yeah. uh, yes, I'm a resident of 350 Central Park West. Okay. And I'm calling to discuss the uh, uh, project that relates to 6 West 95th Street. Okay, so that's Six number two. On That'll the be, yeah, number two. Uh, so that's in correct. So it's, uh, you can't see me. I just want to make sure that that is the protocol. Is that correct? Yeah, I'm we will. Uh, see you. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Kay. Yeah, go ahead. No, uh, w when it comes up time for the public to speak, yeah, just put you raise your hand then. Okay, Carol? Yes, thank you. Thank you. All right, right. Shall we proceed? I think I think Madge is saying something, but she's muted. Madge, you're frozen and muted. There you are. Oops, no, you're not. Who is Mr. Lim? The, the first uh, gentleman is from the board. One more is the architect, and who is Mr. Lim? Mr. Lim is Tosan. You want to? Do you want to? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm also, also a board member. He's also a board member. So. Oh, you're a board member. I'm also too. a board member. Okay. My apologies. I should have clarified. Beautiful. Thank you. So, um, if it's all right with you guys, I will just, you know, give you a very brief background, and then I'll I'll hand it over uh, to Garo and to Tosun. Um, so this, you know, we're obviously in a historic, beautiful building on on. Um, Central Park West between 85th and 86th. Uh, the discussions about some sort of, you know, amenity space slash roof deck um, on our beautiful roof go back well over a decade. Uh, they precede my involvement by, you know, quite a few years. And for a variety of reasons, um, you know, we had a we had a very big exterior project just to fix our exterior. It never really got going, and so we started looking into this um, at the end of last year in earnest, um, really mostly this year. Um, and, you know, the, the reasons why uh, just a simple roof deck on our roof in this space, um, I think are, are fairly evident. Um, but, you know, I, I'm one of those people in the building um, who was here for every single day um, in 2020, 2021. And I think COVID made a lot of people realize uh, just how valuable you know, having some sort of community outdoor space would be because we really don't have any in our building. Um, and, and so we really felt uh, that that was lacking. Um, and really overall, it's just, you know, it, uh, we don't have that much space for to add amenities in a historic building. Um, so this would really be the only thing that would, that could be done to add uh, to the sense of community in our building. Um, the way we're thinking about it is, you know, it's, there's nothing, there's not gonna be anything particularly fancy about it. It's um, it's in keeping, we're gonna use materials, I should say, that are in keeping with the look uh, and historic nature and feel of our building um, and sort of very neutral and understated materials. And we're really um, super concerned about accessibility um, because while there might may not be residents today who are necessarily impacted, we, need, we would need to do something that uh, works for you know, many generations of residents um, who have different access accessibility profiles and challenges um, to get up uh, to get up to the roof deck space that we're proposing. Um, and so, I'll hand it over. I'll hand it over to Garrow with that. Garrow, you're muted. We can't hear anything. He's still muted. Uh, can you hear him? Yeah. It looks like he's frozen. Uh, yes, we can hear you. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm Garo Gimushin, the architect. Um, but I'll just follow up on Anupam's uh, presentation with, uh, with some of the uh, zoning and the building code, uh, building department uh, uh, directives which made this project feasible. It's, uh, as you may know, it's uh, having a, a roof deck uh, was just about impossible uh, considering all the certificate of occupancy issues, the zoning issues and everything else. So the building department uh, realizing that this is an amenity which is desirable. 
especially in this uh, pre-war buildings. It's um, they have this uh, they issued this uh, particular bulletin directive, which uh, if you comply with those uh, stipulations within the within the directive, then a project like this would be approved by the building department without going through uh, the complicated issues of amending the COO and, and everything else. So this is a very uh, simple project where we're really, what we're doing is we're putting some pavers and what we're presenting to the building department is that there, there will be a limited number of people on this, um, on this roof deck. And that limited number of people comes from uh, some of the egress issues, which I don't want to get into right now. But all in all, there will be 30 people at most uh, on this roof deck. It's, uh, that's what's allowed uh, with the egress limitations and the building code limitations. So um, that that's, has been established as well. Uh, the building department is going to approve it upon the landmarks uh, review and approval. The issue that uh, the building is going through the, 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 what I would consider an enormous expense to comply with the people with disabilities, uh, the so-called ADA uh, laws and provide access to this roof deck for people with disabilities with the, with, by extending the elevator. And uh, that's what we are really here for today for this elevator bulkhead. Uh, that's going to be reviewed by the, that's, that the landmark is asking to review with the, for a hearing. But uh, the, it's, it's something that the building is going through this expense of extending it to the roof so that, so that people will be able to get onto, onto the elevator from the lobby and go directly up to the roof. So, so that's the that's the concept behind this elevator bulkhead. And uh, uh, so, otherwise, again, it's uh, the there is a small greenhouse for which would be serve as a vestibule coming out of the elevator. And that's, that's, again, there's a zoning limitation of 74 square foot, which is a very small vestibule, which is accepted uh, under the zoning reg regulations without adding the floor FAR to the building. So that the building department has reviewed and accepted as well. And uh, it's not visible. It's a, it's a, Again, 74 square foot of greenhouse uh, vestibule. And there are two trellises. Again, um, obviously they are not considered uh, FAR. They're, they're uh, freestanding structures, not visible. Um, so the only thing that's visible that we are here for is the elevator bulkhead. So that's the only thing we're considering for yeah. LPC? Yes. So you already have approval for the vestibule. Do you have any drawings? Do you have anything to show us? Yeah, we. Yeah, we I have a set of drawings, but the you, the, the architect usually shares the screen. But I can pull yeah, it up if you want. Uh, we we can share the screen. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Exactly. Okay, All right. So, show us. Well, show us what you got. <laughs> wait, yeah, yeah. Wait a minute. Me... I'm trying to figure this out. The vestibule has already been approved. Yes. By DOB. By the DOB. Yes. Not by LPC. LPC. Well, my LPC as well. LPC oh. wanted to know if the building department is approving it, if there are any FAR issues. There are none. So that has been approved. LPC has approved as well. At staff level. Yes. So, so I'm sorry, may I jump in? Because uh, yeah. I'm suspecting that what LPC has done is ask for a clean objection sheet. And you're saying that from DOB, you have one. Yes. But that's different than saying that. So the question I guess I want to know, um, is uh, does this, what is the scope of the public hearing right. that will be conducted on this? Is it just the elevator um, overrun or is it also the greenhouse? My guess is that it's both, but, um, but, I would, but I would like to have an answer to that question. It's not, it's only the elevator bulkhead, not the greenhouse. The greenhouse landmarks wanted to know if it's, if it's approved by the DOB considering that it's a, there may be an FAR issue. Okay. There aren't, that has been, that objection has been satisfied by showing to the landmarks 
what the BIN department has raised as an objection and what he has approved as an objection. And the, the mock-up that's on the roof, is that the elevator bulkhead? That's right, yeah. Where I walked around, I couldn't see it. I could see it only no, from the park, you, you, you know, it's not huge. I mean, yeah, you can see moderate. it, you know, cause uh, you can't see it from Central Park West, um, but you no. can see it if you walk, you know, just on 85th or sorry, 86th, if you walk into the park um, and you go back a ways, you can see it. And then also on 85th, if you walk up to that hill or just generally, I mean, the, the bulkhead is definitely visible. Okay, now can we see some of your uh, plans? Can we see? Yeah, some so sure. I'm going to share screen. Thanks. I'm going to share my screen. Tell me when you can see it. There we go. Yes. Can you all see the screen? Sure. Yeah. Great. And can you see my cursor? Yes. Yep. Okay, great. So my name is To Sun Lim. I'm a board member as well and a longtime resident at 257. Um, and uh, so I just want to quickly go through uh, the board, the, sorry, the package to LPC and to yourselves here. So it's a small image here. Uh, this is the first page here, uh, just locating our building that the, you can see in the middle there. That is the uh, historic district and, and our building there uh, in the middle uh, at 86th Street. Um, these are photos of 257 on the right, uh, on the bottom most side, that's 86th Street, looking up directly from the street, across the street. The middle photo is uh, from Central Park West, looking from across the street, and then of course the top is the corner composite. You can see on the left here, historic photos there, uh, showing the overall bulk of the building is exactly the same as it, as it always has been, uh, with our cornice line, and then the um, 12th floor up above. Uh, and then finally in the very middle there at the top, um, the existing roof uh, from Google Earth there, basically uh, mechanical systems there currently. Um, this is actually the roof of both uh, buildings at 86th Street, which is ours, and our sister building at 253 Central Park West, which is on 85th Street. So uh, ours is actually just one half of this roof that you see. <clears throat> These are the two plans on the left. Again, the existing roof with uh, the mechanicals that just to orient yourselves here. The top of the page is Central Park West. The left side is 86th Street. Um, in the middle there, you can see essentially the core area that we are, uh, that Garo was explaining a little bit. This is the elevator system hey, that we uh, will Tosa? be. Tosa, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt. Does anybody need us to uh, zoom in or is, is it pretty nice for everybody? That Why don't I zoom nice in? To in? Zoom back. Yeah, yeah why don't I do that? Great, thank you. Yeah, sure. Sorry about that. Great, thank <clears throat> you. Yeah, so this is, again, this top edge here is Central Park West, and the left edge is 86. This core in the uh, center of the drawing now are the two elevators uh, that currently exist the building, uh, sorry, or, um, service the building, uh, but we are only accessing a one uh, up onto the roof, uh, and that's this right elevator. Uh, we will be bringing it up uh, um, um, up to um, the roof level and extending the hoistway just on this right side. As well, we will be enclosing it for weather related purposes with a glass vestibule. That's really there just to enclose the doors and to prevent water to get in from getting in on the, uh, the new elevator doors. You can see the rest of the roof currently besides the core is, is, is flat uh, or, or slope just for drainage, but essentially flat. Uh, with exhaust vents. You can see a round water tower here. Uh, on the bottom right here is a cooling tower. This is all existing. Uh, as you slide down 86th Street, there's a second core. This is our service elevator, exit stair, bulkhead, and another water tank, and the remaining exhaust fans and vents and, and everything else. <clears throat> so I'll just slide over now to the proposed plan. And you can see it is oriented the same direction here. And there you can see the core in the center there with the existing water tower. And this is currently the highest point uh, on our roof from all the mechanical structures, this round water um, tank that's in the center there. And so our plan is relatively simple here. We are, as I said, extending this elevator to bring uh, uh, accessible, uh, uh, accessibility access uh, to the roof. Uh, we are putting a small vestibule around the doors we will be essentially putting concrete or, uh, or uh, stone pavers 
uh, on pedestals uh, across the roof here. And then in certain areas, we will be putting a natural wood uh, paver system where we intend to have um, lounge seating or small tables. As well, you can see the green along the perimeter uh, are uh, freestanding uh, planters, uh, as well as a series of planters dotted throughout. The only other architectural feature uh, that we'll be adding uh, is this uh, two gazebos. They are eight foot high natural wood to match the pallet decking. Um, and they are essentially open trellis systems for shading uh, for lounge areas here on the right where my cursor is it was for people to lounge looking out to the park. And then on the left hand side here, uh, a similar size trellis uh, that would be for table seating and, and other things. <clears throat> you can see that we've also created a small fenced in area here to essentially contain the sort of designed area of our, of our uh, roof deck. The remaining areas will just be the paver system uh, just to clean up the roof. And it will also provide our second means of egress uh, to the core stair that is to the west uh, end of the roof here. Um, I'm gonna move on to the next page here. So yeah, that's just- so, so I'm sorry, just- um, Yeah, go ahead. A couple of, a couple of things to note. Um, yeah. where, where you see that green perimeter uh, around the edge, yeah, where the cursor is, um, we are actually, putting in a, a very simple um, second fence. And the reason you see that gap between the green and, and really the, um, the parapet, I guess, of the building is we wanted to set it back a little bit more. We already have railing, but we wanted to set it back further um, for just you know nothing more than safety um, so that nobody can really go all the way up to the edge. And so we will have uh, a pretty short second fence um, surrounded essentially by, by planters. But how yeah. tall? Uh, it'll be a regulation uh, uh, fence height, which is a 1.5 meters or uh, what, it, <clears throat> what color is the trellis? The trellis, we're looking at a natural oak finish, okay. as That's well as the, the wood pavers that are underneath it and through the area. Yeah, they'll, they'll match. Um, and and the, reason, all match. the reason, of course, is you might expect that we set them back in both cases on the top right and the bottom left uh, is purely so that they would not be visible at all. Yeah, so our drawings will, are showing that as we go through the... Okay, and last question, is there um, lighting? Yes, we'll, we'll go through that. Okay. Uh, the, so there's low level lighting uh, just for ambient uh, lighting for use at night, basically. We are intending to put low bollards along the walkway areas for safety. Uh, and then the trellises will have integrated down lights of low level, uh, you know, just for uh, ambient use. That's it. And the, some of the trees will be uplit too, purely for um, accent lighting. Okay, thank you. I'll go to the next page. So again, this is the photo uh, or uh, bird's eye view of our building. On the bottom side is Central Park West. On the right is 86. You can see that currently it is, is really just open roof mechanical. The design, uh, which is uh, here in this rendering here, um, is oriented the same way. This gray area is in fact the elevator. And you can see that this now uh, includes our proposed raised uh, elevator hoistway to allow this particular elevator to access this roof here with this glass vestibule, which sits under an existing um, uh, access grating. This access grating is there now, and you'll see in later photos, to help access to these overrides for the elevators. So the reason we've said that the uh, um, greenhouse is, or vestibule is, is not a landmarks issue is because it is in fact already under existing structure. <clears throat> you can see here the renderings here, these are the wooded areas, uh, wooded paver areas for seating, uh, intermittent with the concrete or stone pavers uh, for the walkways. And then these are the two trellises, uh, as you can see, set back from the edge. And you can see the, this gap here, which uh, Anupam had mentioned here. Again, it's a secondary fence that we are doing, again, out of the same wood, the same light oak, um, with intermittent planters along the edge. And, and the whole idea is, again, for safety. Uh, we didn't want kids coming up to the edge. We didn't want people uh, with drinks to be leaning over the existing parapet and potentially dropping things over the side. So we were very conscious about that. <clears throat> uh, 
Um, these are the sectional drawings uh, cut through the roof. Uh, and they just show the various heights of the structures here. So this top drawing here on the very left here is a, is a, it's, if you're standing on the Central Park West parapet and looking back at the building here, this is the small gazebo that is facing Central Park West. And this is the other gazebo that was for uh, facing 86th Street. You can see that they are eight feet high and they are no higher than the existing bulkhead uh, for the core area where we have the new vestibule. The, the water tower we had mentioned, which is currently the highest structure is in the background. And then this green is the new extended hoistway to allow us to get up to the roof here. It is now uh, 20 feet uh, above the uh, roof level. The existing uh, hoistway level, which you see was coincident with the one on the right, was only 13 feet. <clears throat> Here's another section looking the other direction. You can just see that the relationship of the hoistway uh, to the water tower, existing water tower. And also we should mention that the materiality of all this is, is also in keeping with what's already there. There is a, a, a sort of medium gray paneling that is on this metal paneling that's surrounding this core. We are just using that existing paneling uh, to extend uh, the hoistway as well. Um, and here you can see this bottom photo, I'll expand it a little bit, which gives you a little bit of a feel for the materiality of what we're doing here. So this is the existing catwalk bridge under which we were putting the new vestibule. The elevator hoistway here is extended with the same material that you see um, in the photo right now. Um, these poles that you see uh, are remnants of uh, previous work. Uh, those will be cut and the fencing that you saw in our design will be, will be put in place. <clears throat> I'm just gonna move along here. Uh, these are the sectional uh, and sightline drawings. And I'll just focus in on these four that are in the center here because those are really what's most important. Uh, as Anupam was saying, um, it's the sight line from Central Park West that was of most concern. And uh, just when you take a sight line from a person standing across Central Park West, uh, which is 90 feet wide here, that sight line to the parapet uh, would not intersect any of the new construction. You can see here that this is the elevator extension uh, here, well back here. And if you continue this sight line from across the street, it is well below uh, the sight line from anybody standing across the street. So uh, to your point that you didn't, most people don't see anything when they're walking up and down 86 and South Park West, that is confirmed here. <clears throat> but you could, um, see it, you could see it from Central Park, right? Correct. Uh, so you would have to go well into the park on a early spring day or winter's day uh, to see that. Um, on the right here, again, this is uh, the same section um, showing the addition of our fencing as well as the uh, trellis. And they too are of course, well below the uh, sight line at Central Park West because they're well lower than the elevator extension. Moving to the 86th street side here, same story. Um, the 86th street side, which is also 90 feet, person standing across the street would not see any of the new or existing mechanicals that are there now. Uh, on the right, all the addition of the trellis uh, and the elevator extension um, are all well within the sight line. I'll go to the next page now. These are views confirming what we uh, showed in the diagrams. This is the view from 86th Street directly across. <laughs> yeah, and that's, uh, that's mid block. Mid block, of course. Yeah. Um, we have already made mock ups. So these photos do show the mock ups of our trellises, our perimeter fence, and the elevator extension. So any photo you see here uh, is just to verify our mock ups here. So you can see that there's no sight line issue here on 86th Street. Uh, neither is there from the corner of 86th and Central Park West. Um, and then as we've been noting here, it's only when you start going well into the park and you can see in the bottom left, we are all the way down to the pathway. Um, this camera view is from the pathway well inside the park. So you can see from those images there, and I'm just gonna zoom in again here. Uh, and this of course is even zooming in further than actual, but you can see this mock-up is popping up 
now here. And one of the interesting things is, is that it is the exact same size as the existing uh, elevator uh, extension that is at 253, our, our sister building. Moving over to the other side here, this is just another view. Again, you can see the proposed extension from the mock-up here and our existing nope. uh, elevator over here. And then finally, we just enhanced it in this photo here with uh, rendered color in the gray metal uh, here uh, to show you the relationship of the two. And again, um, here we are zooming in considerably. Uh, the actual view from there is, is really this distance that's on the left. <clears throat> You'll notice that no other structures are, are visible even from this distance uh, other than the elevator extension. Um, here's another uh, photo that's taken a little further east of our building. The previous photo was taken about where my cursor is here further northeast. Uh, this new series of photos is just taken from a different angle. You can see uh, here uh, the relationship of the two mock-up extensions, or sorry, our mock-up and the existing extension, uh, and then now an enhanced uh, a rendered view. Now from the southeast, excuse me, I'll zoom in here. This photo uh, taken now from the southeast, number five looking here. Uh, you can see that as we zoom in, um, the mock-up is barely visible through the, the trees here. This was taken a few months, uh, weeks ago, uh, as well as our existing uh, sister building here. <clears throat> Here's another photo a little clearer. The mock-up is right here where my cursor is uh, and the existing elevator. Uh, and I believe this is a rendered enhanced version here. I'm going to go to the next page. Again, photos taken directly from across the street. Someone needs to extreme. mute themselves. So this, uh, I think this is the last series of photos. Uh, well, this series of photos is taken directly uh, across the street, a little bit further south on Central Park West. This is number six, you can see on the left-hand side. Uh, again, when we're on Central Park West, the sight lines are completely past uh, any new extension. These are photos of the mock-ups themselves here. Uh, so you can see that they are related to the heights with, that were in our drawings. The top left is the actual mock-up for the elevator extension. You can see that this is the 20-foot mark here uh, and the existing elevators uh, that are there now. <clears throat> this is just the positioning of the fence. This is looking south along Central Park West. This is the proposed positioning of the fence, a uh, secondary fence that we are doing in wood that will be um, set back from the existing parapet. You can see we have an existing white regulation guardrail that's there now. That's not wood, is it? That's metal, yeah, metal. and that's existing, yeah. Okay. Painted metal, I should say. Matches the painting of the flashing that's on the top there. And this is the corner view looking, you can see the reservoir on the right, so we're looking northeast. This is our neighbor across on 86th Street. Uh, and then um, this is a mock-up of the gazebos themselves at eight feet. Mark, did you have a question? Yes, but I think they just answered it. So yes. um, you were showing us um, you were showing us uh, visibility studies from within Central Park um, and showing us the elevator overrun. Um, were those photographs taken at a time when the pergola, the gazebo, was also mock, uh, mocked up? So that yes, we, every, exactly. Everything was mocked up at the same time. So the 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 only visibility was from our tests was of the uh, elevator extension. In all those photos, the gazebo and the fencing did exist and was there, as you see in the photos on the screen right now, they just weren't visible. And it, is, it, is, it is also still there. I think we're required to keep it up. So keep it up. Great. Um, and then the last question I have it while I have the floor is the elevator overrun itself. Um, the, the drawings that you submitted earlier make it look kind of a neutral dark gray or black. 
what are the materials and what are the colors that you're presenting? Uh, we would use the existing uh, cladding system that you see here, which is that neutral gray, uh, that we would just continue it up. What's the Easy height? The of, what's the height? 20, of, uh, the, so these ones are currently uh, just sharp 13 feet right now, and the new one would be 20 feet. So it's an incremental seven on top of the 13 yeah. that's existing, uh, Tosa? Correct. That's what's in the drawings. Can you confirm that, Garo, please? I, I don't have the numbers. Um, that's what I was on. It's, uh, it's either seven or I think it's, it's nine feet. But okay. I'll, um, yeah, I think it's I think it's seven feet um, because is, the existing is thirteen and and the uh, new is twenty. Is 20 oh, okay. the, yeah. the increment the increment. I mean, I can't tell if there's a little <laughs> from the picture if there's a little bit of difference between that. Railing, but it's a it's an incremental seven feet. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Clary, Clary has a question. Yeah, uh, some of my questions I think have been answered. Um, okay. I'm I'm surprised that you're using oak, as I understand it, for your uh, your surfaces um, as opposed to um, ipe or teak, if unless ipe has been banned by now for environmental reasons, and also surprised that DOB is allowing you to use so much wood as a percentage of your floor area there, and also that's uh, been kept to the low, the allowable limit, correct, Gara? Okay. It is. It's, it's really not our yeah. issue, I guess. It just looked surprising yeah. to me. The yeah. similar well, regard to the wood, the new wood fence. Why that would be wood, but I guess it's also not our issue because we can't see it. Right. Yeah, and that was all to keep in, uh, in keeping with the planter materials and everything like that. But we are we're talking about wood as an area for the entirety of the roof, which is considerably bigger, right. about ten thousand square feet here. Right. right. And the wood the wood is only the the four triangle. Ah, uh, sorry. Tri four four rectangles. Four rectangles. Yeah. Right. So you can right. see as a percentage of the roof, they're tiny. Hmm. Well, in any event, um, I don't think I'm want to want to speak a second time. So I'm okay with this. Um, I, I think it's fine. I think it's a good thing you're doing. Thank you, Clary. Uh, Jay had his hand up as well. Yeah, I just wanted to be 110% clear that the only thing that is before us is the increased uh, bulkhead, right? Fences, flooring, all that stuff is, is not our issue, as Clary said, correct? And also that the trellises are not visible. No, I, I understand. I just want to be clear yep. that we're only talking about the bulkheads. Well, you can include the trellises into the conversation as well, that the trellises are not visible as well. I understand they're not visible, but yep. they, they'll be approved at staff level. We're not reviewing it won't be the subject of a public hearing. Okay. Correct. Well, this is going to go to a public hearing. Okay. Yeah, we're doing right, that. Never mind. Uh, I don't want to speak again. Uh, also, so I'm fine with this. Thank you, Jay. Madge, did you have a question? Yes, just the height of the greenhouse. The it's, greenhouse. Yeah, currently it's, uh, it's um, underneath this existing railing. So it is about seven feet. And that's not part of this vote at all. It's here in this drawing right here. I'm saying, but we're not voting on this at all. I don't yes, think the it's greenhouse not. because it's, yeah, it's, it's not, it, it has no visibility whatsoever from the. The question the is whether we're reviewing it, not whether. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Garo, you have to, Garo, you'll have to answer that. No. no, you're not. You're not. Reviewing. We're not. No. Because it's part of an existing structure. And I'm sorry, uh, Jason, did, was that seven or eight? I can't seven feet or eight feet anyway i can't really see that i can't eight see feet. It either it says eight feet here but uh yeah. you know we uh we do have to call the, okay. the height of the new floor but anyway michelle did you have a yeah um could we see the picture of the finished roof because i'd like to see the second um exit you have one elevator and the second now how do you get to that from this is an, actually an opening um, you'll see in the plan here. So this is the front core, the elevator, okay. as you know. That was here, delicious. Thank you. Yeah, the core. Page, was, page. Um, we can um, hear everything you're saying. 
You can. Yes. yes. Thank you. E either share it or stop talking. Yeah. Or <laughs> mute thought it. I had it muted. I'm mute. <laughs> I'm sorry. Could you um, do that again? Now I'm hungry. Could yeah. Sorry. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> yes. We should all rush to dinner, right? So these are the two <laughs> elevators. In between the two elevators is a stair. So that's fire yes. stair number one. Okay. Uh, and then here, this pathway actually leads through an opening. This rendering is a little mis misleading here. There's actually an opening that goes to this stair where the other, uh, which is the secondary means of egress. Okay. Uh, if you look on the plan, you can see that this is the opening here. Oh, uh, yeah, right I did see that. Okay. Yeah. Thank, uh, thank and then Mark, you. did you have another question? Uh, it's not a question. Is that we, we seem to be onto comments, so I'm going to offer okay. mine. Um, and that is, I have no confidence um, in this presentation that we're only to review the elevator overrun, although that's possible. So I don't think that we should limit our resolution uh, just in case um, there's more to it. Plus, this brings up an issue that we confronted about a year ago um, at 333 Central Park West with a pergola on that roof. Now that pergola should have taken a lesson from this pergola yeah. uh, because this is what it should be. And, yeah. and, and that one was, you know, remember it was bright, shiny, white material, um, metallic in nature and-, and uh, Much and more visible, yeah. Much yeah. more visible and, and lit. Um, so I would propose that we have a resolution to approve all of this as presented. I would offer a recommendation that the lighting, uh, that, that some comment be made in, in, in the way of a, re a recommendation, not a condition, that the lighting be um, only for accent purposes and that they consider safety lighting on the- on the ground instead of lighting in the pergola itself, but because it's not visible, I would just suggest that. Um, but then I would suggest that we pr uh, approve the whole thing as presented um, based on that. That would be my suggestion for, for this. And I think maybe it might make sense um, within the resolution or at least in presentation to the full board to distinguish this from 333 Central Park West so that we are, in, we are viewed as being consistent as in fact, I believe we are, thanks. Yeah been very much on my mind as well. All right. Um, I I, may, I, may I just ask one follow-up question just so we, we take on board what you just said about the lighting, um, the recommendation you made, um, the lighting on the trellis, because um, the so way there, there are there are kinds of lighting that you can embed into the into the surface, so the pavers or the uh, yeah. or the or the or the wood that actually absorbs sunlight during the day and then give a very soft glow at night. Um, they're often referred to as safety lights because they're not enough to read by, but you can find your way back to the elevator using them. Um, it's actually a very nice effect. You talked about um, uplighting your trees, and this is sort of the same kind of thing. It's environmentally friendly, and even if you're all the way into the park, no one's going to see the roof of your pergola from the lighting. Um, it sounds like that's not an issue, but I just think that's a, a recommendation that's worth making for this context. Yeah, and, and, and you know, what we want to do is, is uh, first and foremost, safety. Obviously, we don't want anybody tripping up there at night, and then we certainly don't want this thing to be some shiny glowy thing so we'll we'll um we'll go look into that um i guess my only question and it's none of our business but um in light of the uh, dob is you know like well you have like sirens and and flashing lights that go off if more than 30 people uh, step onto the the roof at any one time it looks very in, in, enticing and inviting i'd have oh, you know, I, I all my yeah, well, I, I think the board and management are going to have to enforce that. We're going to, I mean, we haven't fully figured that out yet, but we're going to do some form of a, a sign-up sheet. Um, mm -hmm. And and clearly, we're not going to have rentals of parties with giant, you know, giant groups. Yeah. That's not the intent of this. Of course. Okay. Just curious. Thank you. All right. I'm kind of, uh, with the rest of you, I'm ready uh, personally to, to vote uh, to support okay. and move on. Um, hey, my hand was up again, and I see a couple of others as well, actually. Yeah, yeah and I want to make see. sure that I the see. public or the non-committee board members have anything to say. Okay. You want to do Paige and then Clary, or Clary and then Paige? Whatever you want. Yeah, Paige I'm, not, I'm not seeing Paige on here, but yeah, go ahead, Paige. Your hand is up. Um, uh, okay, hang on a sec. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, two quick questions. Just the area to the left. Um, that's white with the fenced area that is mm -hmm. off limits behind the fence. Correct. 
correct, because that's a mechanical area. Okay. Yeah, that, is, that is covered with mechanical stuff. And are you envisioning um, any water um, uh, slides, swimming pool, little swimming pool? No. Kids? No. No Great. water features. No never, water ever, features. Never, and, ever, ever. <laughs> and um, any barbecues? Food? Just, just for the subway. Yeah, we, 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 we haven't um, thought about that, but there is, I think, you know, some, someone had mentioned at some point, should we put um, an electric, an electric, um, what do you call that thing? Grill. I don't know, sorry, Grill. my memory today. An electric just made a receptacle. Yeah. The only reason um, why I ask is the last one we reviewed had non-combustible uh, paving and fencing. And you have wood here, so I would just make sure that you're coordinated between where yeah. you place your heater, whether it's charcoal or electric or whatever gas, um, because that would be unfortunate. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, right. thank you for that. Yeah, get, and gas is out of the question. We're not doing that. Okay. It's not Great. allowed. Yeah. Uh, I see uh, Michelle, Bye. Clary, Jay. Oh, no. No, my hand should be down. Okay. But uh, Clary. Okay, I guess okay. I'm back again with two things. First, I think Mark is almost certainly correct that we're looking at the whole application. We may say that we note happily that uh, the most of these elements are not visible from a public way and that contributes to our approval. But I think he's, Mark is very likely correct that we are looking at the whole application and should characterize it that way. Um, but the main reason I raise my hand again is um, I'm now not clear on the lights. I think, yes, having embedded lights would be good, uh, wayfinders. But I thought I understood in the beginning, and I may have misunderstood, that you had in mind some kind of down lights on, uh, from the, at, the per, at the pergola that would illuminate the space under the pergola for people in the nighttime. Am, am I wrong about that? That was the original intention, yes. So, so they we are, are narrow about... beam lights so that uh, you know the light is contained uh, and low voltage so that they contain only within right. the, uh, the sure. So we are talking about some lights that are not embedded at the roof level or the paver or the wood Correct. level, but are uh, how high is the pergola from the- Eight feet. Okay, so we're talking about lights that are eight feet above the um, uh, above the pa the pavement or the the area where one steps. I, I think we all understand that the pergolas themselves would not be visible from a public way; only the elevator bulkhead would. But do we have confidence that this lighting would be down lighting or otherwise would not illuminate the sky going up from the pergolas? I mean, our, our intent is um, if we can figure out a way to if we can figure out a way to provide ambient lighting just so it isn't dark up there, right? Um, you know, using using bollards and things like that. We also don't want people running into bollards and kicking bollards and things like that. Um, but if we can illuminate it without using lights in the pergola, we will certainly do so. But you know, to the extent we have them, they will be limited and they'll certainly be facing down. Like well, it, 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 it may not be bad to have lights in the pergola, just there's a concept of, particularly outside of New York City, because we have so much light pollution here, of dark skies and darks. I think New York actually has dark sky um, uh, uh, building code provisions, although I'm not familiar with them, maybe pages. But the idea is you, you're down lighting, you're not Uplighting, you're downlighting yeah, right. to accomplish what yeah, you right. want to accomplish without yeah. extra illumination facing up. Right. Yeah. So the lighting is contained within that zone. There is really both in all directions. Is really our intention. All right. Uh, okay. Jay, did you have another thought or question? You're yeah. you're muted. So I, 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 at the risk of seeming testy, and maybe because I was already at a long, little over two hour meeting this morning, uh, I don't agree with Mark and I don't agree with Clary. Mm. I think we should stick to what we are supposed to be renewing and lights and wood and barbecues and swimming pools are not uh, what we're supposed to be renewing. Reviewing, and I, I just think, in the interests of time and efficiency, uh, we shouldn't go off kilter on these things. And 
if there's a resolution that includes all of this stuff, I'll, I'll just abstain on it. Yeah, I don't think we're including all that stuff, right? I think what the, what the agenda said, and I think it's probably what we're supposed to be looking at, installation of a roof deck and greenhouse structure and increase in the height of existing elevator overrun uh, with an emphasis on the elevator overrun. Um, so, you know, I'm not 100% sure about this, but, you know, your coordinator, Jesse, who is, by the way, has been a pleasure to work with. Amazing. Uh, yeah. Amazing. Unbelievable. Just super efficient, super responsive uh, and wonderful. Um, I think she created that that summary based on the, if I'm not mistaken, based on the um, initial plans and narrative that she had asked me for, for what it's worth. Okay. All right, I think I think we, yeah, I think we're getting close. Um, so we're, the resolution is just going to be for the increase in height of an existing elevator overrun. And and the now material the, as well. Yeah, on the bulkhead. On the bulkhead. Yes. Okay, Susan, did you have a? Yeah, just a quick thing. I just want to clarify that although it might not be um, uh, significant, that this is visible from the public way, meaning from Central Park. Right. Yeah. Yes? It is. Great, thanks. Cool. All right. Are we able so to increase in height for the elevator over on this resolution that we're approving? Or do we want Jesse's wording? The roof deck amenities. I think the I think the motion was to approve the height and the material of the uh, additional. Uh, of the bulkhead. Okay. Yeah. I'm I'm, con I'm confused because the description says installation of a roof deck and greenhouse structure, as well. It's incorrect. That is not part of this. No. Correct. It is not. Okay. Yeah, I think I mean, now I think that I'm looking. Part of it. It, it says it's A and B. It. How do we know it's not part of it? They said. That's what has been represented, that I all do. the rest of it is uh, not before us and won't be at a public hearing. Look, the, a the applicant has to tell us what are we, what are we looking at? Or, or I recommend did. that we deny the application because we don't know what it is. Um, I, 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 I wouldn't go there. I, would simply, I, I think we simply, yeah, I think we simply resolve to approve as presented, um, and mm -hmm. let the applicant sort it out with LPC. I agree. Okay, that makes sense. All right. So there is a proposal of a resolution to approve as presented. <laughs> Thank you, Pages Puff. <laughs> And uh, you want me to take the vote? Sure. sure. All right, Mark. Can we stop the screen share so we can see? Great. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, Tosin. Mark Diller. Yes. Kay Carpin. Yes. Peter Sampton. Yes. Paige Cowley. Abstain. Larry. Yes. Sue Schwartz. Abstain. Josh. Yes. Me, I'm abstaining. Jay. Yes. Madge. Yes. All right, so the vote is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In favor, none opposed, three abstaining. We have a non-committee board member present. Okay. I counted our votes first, 7030. We have one non committee board member with us this evening, and that's Madeline Innocent. Yes. Okay, thank you. And, the, and it's 1000. So the resolution passed. The application in front of us is approved as presented. And um, you do you have an LPC date yet? Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I um, should have mentioned that in the beginning. Our LPC date is June 7. Okay. Oh, that's when our board meeting is. Right. I, so we'll, I think they fill out 
I think they saw online, and I think I thought I saw as well that there was the full board meeting scheduled for June one. Was that changed? Oh, is that? That was a mistake. It was changed about two weeks Ooh. ago. Ooh, gotcha. Can um, you move LPC a week? A, a week more? We can. Um, we can. I think what? we we can send the committee. Uh, resolution in my humble opinion this doesn't rise to the level of something where we ask uh, LPC to delay the hearing we usually save that for significant uh, extensive projects and that's always been our agreement with LPC and since they accept our committee resolutions I think we should leave it at that so your proposal is to uh, present the committee resolution at full board, but we may know what LPC, if one of us goes to LPC, we may know. And, and if any, you know, if anyone wants to go and yeah. uh, speak on it, it that's, yeah, they that's true. And also. That's true. I think if it's not urgent, I think it shouldn't hurt to just delay it one week so that the full board has the opportunity to see this. It seems like it's not that much to ask. Well, Susan, the only thing, I, I would agree with you, but the only thing is we've had this long-standing agreement with LPC, uh, at which they've honored, which is not to request that they delay their public hearing schedule uh, for projects that we don't necessarily consider significant or extensive. Uh, yet, and, and I don't think that rises to that level, and I think we should honor uh, our agreement with them since they've been cooperative in that regard. That's my opinion. Yeah, maybe Jay is right. We have some other significant issues. We're going into summer. Um, we have enough on our plate. Fair enough. Okay, so right. we will see you at LPC on June 7th, and you know we have the full board meeting as well on June 7th. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you very much. much. Your time. Yeah. Thank you. Have a great evening. Thank you very much for Thanks. your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, next is 6 West 95th Street, application to LPC to A, build a one-story rooftop addition, B, expand the basement and first floor rear addition, and I guess, uh, and, add, oh, and, and add window openings to the west side of the addition, and C, to convert a top floor rear facade window to, into a door. Uh, is there any part of this applicant for 6 West 95th that we are not hearing at, uh, at our committee level? You're hearing it all. Okay. <laughs> and who do we have here? Hi, um, my name is Mary Dierix. I'm the preservation consultant. Uh, there were people, I think, in the webinar who, uh, Andrew Percival, who is going to uh, present with me. Is it possible for him to be brought in? Working on it now. Anybody else? Yeah. And yes, two other people who will be here to answer questions, Peter Pelsinski and Andrea Knox. Can you spell those last names for me, please? Um, I can. Um, so Andrew Percival, P-E-R-C-I-V-A-L. Um, Peter Pelsinski, P-E-L-S-I-N-S-K-I. And Andrea Knox, K-N-O-X. And they're all from SPAN Architecture, S-P-A-N. And we'll remember that we have some members of the public on this one as well, when we get to that. Okay, I see Andrew. Um, would you like to start the presentation? Please. Okay. Can everybody see my screen? Good evening, everyone. Thank you for, for, for being here. Can everyone see? Yes. Yes. Thanks, Andrew. Um, this, um, so um, I've already uh, said uh, who's here with me and I'm going to start the presentation. Andrew is going to do the um, uh, design and I'm gonna come back for the views. Uh, so next, Andrew. This application is to expand, well, we, we, we heard this, expand the rear addition at the basement by three feet and add a stair, um, the, I this, forgot the stair. Um, construct a one-story plus stair bulkhead rooftop addition, lower the top floor east window to create a new door, that's at the rear, and um, turn the 
other rear uh, top floor windows into doors and add four new window openings at the east facade. It will be all uh, clearer when we go through the presentation. Uh, next. Uh, 6 West 95th Street is an 1893-4 to four row house designed by architect Horace Edgar Hartwell. It was originally one of a row of three, and it's now one of two, along with 8 West 95th. Um, this is the house in about 1940, and, and the other is at the time of designation. Next. This is the front facade today. Um, and on the right, you can see the front facade and also the east facade where the new window openings are going. Uh, next. And here's the block um, of, uh, in, you know, the building in context. Next. This is the rear facade. The rear facade was extended under a 2017 landmarks permit. Um, and on the right is the top floor. Next. Now this is, you're looking at the rear yard um, from the roof. And um, also in that shot on the left, you see uh, the alley and a view to 94th Street. Um, this, um, and um, on the right is a view from 94th Street into that alley. Um, the rear addition is going to be visible in this view from 94th Street. Next. Um, this is a view of the, from the roof, um, um, and it's of the additions um, inside the block. Um, on the left, mainly showing uh, 94th Street, um, and on the right, um, looking toward north toward 95th Street, um, where you can see an addition at 5 West 95th um, that was permitted by Landmarks in 2005. Um, it, it's a white stucco addition that it has some sort of temporary shed on it. I, I don't know what that is, but that's not what the addition looks like. It's, it's sort of in there. Uh, next. This row house is one of the shortest buildings on the block. Um, it's adjacent to a 16 story apartment building to the east, 1928-29. Uh, um, to the west, there's, there's the matching uh, three story row house then followed by a group of four-story row houses. The buildings behind, you know, in the, on the, uh, uh, to the south in the, in the block are also four stories high and quite a bit taller four stories. The west end of the block has a large, mo large modern apartment building and that is not actually in the district. It's, the, the full block is not um, inside the historic district. Uh, next, there are a lot of um, rooftop uh, there are a lot of rooftop and rear additions on the block. Most of the townhouses have rear additions and they're in yellow. Um, a, a good amount have rooftop additions or at least bulkheads. And you can see the block and you can see the, the, uh, nine, the across the street at 95th and across the street at 94th. Um, and the next um, sheet. Um, here you see the rooftop additions uh, uh, in a in not a good an aerial map, um, and they're highlighted in red. So it's 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 a fair amount. Yeah, Andrew is showing you six right there, nestled next to the uh, apartment building, and uh, some pretty good size additions um, on um, uh, uh, the, across the way on the, on the ninety fourth um, to the south. Um, next, uh, please. And this is a, a, a view looking um, more or less to the east, uh, showing this the same thing. It's an area where there are rooftop additions and uh, they have been permitted by landmarks. And um, that's what we're looking for here. Um, and next, Andrew. Thank you, Mary. And thank you everybody else for your time this evening. Um, so you're looking here at the, the north elevation, which is the front elevation of the building. At roof level, you can see the one-story rooftop addition that we're proposing, along with the stair bulkhead, which is required for emergency egress to the new roof. The new roof is, um, there's a, a simple black metal guardrail that wraps around the perimeter of the new rooftop as well. Uh, there are no other changes that we're proposing to the front facade of the building, which is in otherwise good condition. Uh, Andrew, can you turn up your volume a little bit? 
Oh, yes, sure. Apologies. Um, microphone. Is that better now? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, can, you, can you make the drawing a little stronger? <laughs> it's a little hard to see it. I can I can zoom in if um, at various points. So this is the rooftop edition here uh, on the right. Oh, hi. Uh, so the height is it's on a later slide. It's from the existing roof at the front end of the building because the existing roof is pitched. The height at the front is uh, nine feet above the existing roof, and at the rear it's eleven feet above the existing roof. Um, that makes it five foot eight above the the cornice. And then the stair bulkhead is a further eight feet above the um, the one story addition. We're going to have detailed visuals. So if you uh, let us kind of move ahead with the presentation, I think that many of your questions will be answered. Right. Um, so this is now moving on to the rear facade elevation. On the left is the existing and on the right proposed. Um, from the bottom of the building upwards at the base of the building at basement level, we have the one story um, addition. This is gonna project out from the existing rear facade by about three feet. Um, that basement level addition creates an exterior terrace at first floor level, um, which then has a three foot six guardrail to, to protect that terrace. Um, from that terrace, there's an exterior stair to the rear yard. And then there's also a, a canopy over the window door that leads out onto that terrace. At third floor level, we are proposing to lengthen the existing window to turn that into a door. And conversely, we'll switch the existing double doors into a double window instead. Um, for the full rear facade, any windows and doors that we're replacing, so that's at the third floor level and then the basement and first floor level as well. Um, and considering the second level too, they'll all be replaced in kind and uh, with equivalent products. At roof level, once again, we have the additional story. So that's where you can see this 10 foot 11 dimension from the, the low point of the existing roof. That's how tall it is. As well as once again, the stair bulkhead and the um, simple metal black guard rail. Um, for the east elevation, this is the existing east elevation. And then the proposed east elevation, once again, at the rear of the building, you can see the one story addition at basement level, that stair that leads you down from first floor level into the rear yard, and then the canopy above that terrace. Additionally, we are proposing four double hung wood windows, um, two on the second floor and two on the third floor on the east facade of the building. That's the facade that Mary pointed out was visible through the alleyway from 95th Street. These windows are similar in width and size to the historic windows on the front facade. And then at roof level, again, we have the, the one-story roof addition, the stair bulkhead and the metal guardrail. This elevation also shows what we're proposing to do to the parapet, which is because we have an exterior roof terrace off the front of the roof addition, which you'll see when we get into the plans, we're proposing to raise the parapet to act as kind of a, a safety full protection for that rear terrace, for that front um, roof terrace, sorry. So we're proposing to raise the parapet such that it ranges from a height of three foot six, roughly three foot six at the front of the building to five foot four at the rear of the building. Again, that's above the existing roof um, because the existing roof pitches. That in, in terms of how that parapet reads, and you'll see this later in the presentation, that means that where currently the, the parapet about two feet back from the, the cornice at the front of the building, it steps down by one foot one. We're proposing to step it up by one foot one instead to meet that um, requirement for the um, full protection. And then also by raising it, reduce the visibility of the proposed addition from, um, from that viewpoint down the alleyway that Mary brought up. In this elevation as well, you can see on top of the roof of the addition, dotted in are the mechanical units that we're proposing to locate up here, along with um, the 
chimney flues that were the these are the chimney flues that are on the party wall with 8 west 95th street our sister property which uh um building code requires be raised up to three feet above um any adjacent structure these are two um uh, visualizations of the the roof addition from the rear of the building. So this is the south elevation. Um, the roof addition, the program for it is two at-home offices for the, the two owners of the building. I, I think we've all kind of experienced the need for at-home work environments over the last couple of years. So they're hoping to add these workspaces to the roof um, as part of the, the, the addition scope. Um, one of the offices is facing north and the other is facing south. The roof addition itself is a util utilitarian structure with a panelized metal rain screen cladding on all four sides and also wrapping around the bulkhead. The, um, the intent of this cladding and the coloring of it, which will be in a couple of slides, is for it to, to blend in with the surrounding roof structures that Mary brought attention to, along with the, the facades of the surrounding tall buildings um, in the neighborhood. Um, at the base of the roof addition, where the roof addition meets the historic facade at the rear, we're proposing this, this section of mansard roof. This mansard roof uh, acts as a transition between the historic building and the new proposed addition, which is set back three feet from the rear facade. The intent behind the mansard roof is, is to kind of maintain that hierarchy of the existing brick cornice that is just below it. So if I zoom in, you can just see that in this, this model here. And uh, to provide a continuity of articulation from the existing zinc gutter that is above that cornice to the new um, metal addition. We also have two bay windows that we're proposing in the addition, one at the north office and one at the south office. The one you're seeing here is the south office. This projects out over that mansard roof. So it projects out from the, the additional story. And the intent behind that is to, to direct the view from the interior of the office away from uh, 350 Central Park West, that 16 story apartment building to the east of us and towards the interior of the block where there's more of the kind of greenery, the trees, like it's a beautiful rear of block. Um, in, the, in this rendering as well, you can see some of the items that we highlighted in the elevations. So that's like the black metal guardrail, the mechanical units in this light gray hair, and then the raised chimney stacks above the bulkhead. Um, equivalent views of the roof addition from the north of the building, from the front elevation, uh, it's exactly the same design principles here. The bay window in this instance is projected out from the, the main mass of the roof addition such that it angles the view from the interior of the office towards Central Park. At the front facade of the roof addition, we also have this FDNY access ladder um, to provide FDNY access from the, the lower roof terrace level up to the new proposed roof. In terms of the materiality of the roof addition, we are, we've talked about the black metal guardrail. We're proposing that the bay window trim and frame be a black painted metal. The, um, the metal rain screen paneling, we're proposing to be in a beige light gray tone, uh, similar to the surrounding roof structures and the surrounding um, context. And then for that mansard roof portion of the transition from the historic to the um, to the new addition, we are proposing a pre-weathered zinc to match the existing zinc gutter that is present there. Moving on to the floor plans. So you're gonna see a series of uh, six, I think, pages of floor plans where the existing is on the top and the proposed is on the bottom. This is the seller plan where there's um, nothing for a community board to address. On basement level, uh, this is where we have that three foot addition at the rear. Mary noted that there was an addition uh, approved in uh, 2017 at the rear. That addition did not increase the FAR of the building at all. It was a trade-off of the, the dog leg that existed and that the sister property still has. Um, we took away some of that and added some in the, in the equivalent area. The new addition adds approximately 50 square feet at this level. It's just under 49 square feet. It projects out from the rear facade just over three feet, three feet, one and a half. 
The proposed depth of excavation for the footings for this is, is maximum of five feet by the structural engineer. And then as noted at first floor level, that rear addition then creates a, an exterior terrace off of the, the existing kitchen dining space. Uh, that terrace has a canopy above it, which is dotted in here. You can see that dotted um, above. And then the exterior stair that goes into the rear yard. How high does that stair, that exterior stair go? So above the finish of the rear yard, it's just under 10 feet to the, to the floor level of the, the terrace. And then the guardrail is a further three foot six above that. Without a landing? This landing here is at the same level as the terrace. So just uh, 10 feet, uh, just under 10 feet above the- No, but there's no landing in the 10 feet of height. No, there's no landing, no. It's a, it's a continual run of 10 feet, is that correct? It's just under 10 feet, yes. Is that within the building department regulations? Uh, yes, it is. is. Is the stair visible from the alleyway? The stair is no. not visible from the alleyway. No, nothing below the, um, the very top of the second floor is visible um, from the alleyway, which we'll see in a later, in a later slide. At second floor level, you can see that canopy um, drawn in below. So that's the canopy over the terrace. And then we have the two windows in the east facade. The same two windows are present on the third floor level. And then at the rear terrace at third floor level, this is where we're proposing to switch what is currently a double door and a window into a single door and a, and a window. Um, important to note here is that because of the presence of this exterior terrace, from that rear alleyway, the bottom of the existing door window and the proposed door and window, none of the, the bottom of none of these are visible from 94th Street. So only the top of these doors and windows are visible. At fourth floor level, so this is our proposed addition. Um, we are intentionally offsetting the rear addition on three sides, on the north, the east, and the south. So the north is the front facade of the building where we're offsetting. Um, we, we've had got a slight slant on the, on the addition where the bay window is smaller than the rest of the addition. So to the, to the full height portion of the addition, we're offsetting th three foot four, just less, 13 foot four, less, just less than. And then um, on the east side of that front facade, we're offsetting 14 foot three. And that's to, to stay clear of the visibility from directly across the street and from the mid block, which you'll see in the um, photos to come. At the rear of the addition, um, we are offsetting three feet and that's where that mansard roof um, portion of the scope is. And then on the east, so this is where the alleyway is, we're offsetting two foot nine to try to reduce the visibility um, through that alley alleyway. And uh, you can see in this plan, the, the two offices, the south facing office and the north facing office. Um, for the stair bulkhead, um, so this is required for egress and that climbs up. Um, it's also held back from even further from the, um, from the north facade, a further 15 foot six from the front of the addition. It pitches towards the rear to keep it non-visible from 95th street. And it is weighted fully to the, um, west of the building so that it's not visible through the alleyway. Um, we also have the mechanical equipment located up here, also weighted to the west of the building to keep it not visible through that alleyway, as well as the simple metal black guardrail that wraps around the perimeter of this. And you can see there's also uh, four skylights, um, four linear strip skylights that um, they, they graze the wall on the interior with daylight. And then at, um, Bulkhead roof level, we have one skylight in the bulkhead as well, um, which is not visible. This is the existing building section and, and kind of demolition scope on the interior and the exterior. And then the proposed building section. Um, so just to kind of summarize the design scope we have at the rear of the building, that, um, that addition, three foot, pro projecting three foot from the rear facade, excavation of five foot depth, and then with that stair and canopy on the exterior. And then at roof level, and that's where you can see that nine foot eight um, height differential um, for that stair. 
so just under 10 feet. And then at roof level, um, we have the one-story addition that above the exist line of the existing roof is about nine feet uh, taller than the existing roof at the front, nine foot 10 above the proposed roof at the front, and um, just shy of 11 feet high of the existing roof at the rear. The um, proposed bulkhead is a further eight feet um, above that, and meaning that uh, we have a total height of ranging from 17 to 19 feet, depending on where you measure on the existing roof. Um, the other elements to talk about the heights are the guardrail, so that's three foot six, and then the, the chimney flues that we addressed with regards to the party wall with eight west 95th, which is a further three feet above the um, bulkhead. I'm going to hand back over to Mary now to talk through the visibility and the, the mock-up and um, uh, mock-up montage pages that we have prepared. Um, this is the mock-up. Um, this is looking from 95th Street to the south. Um, the addition and the bulkhead have orange netting on them. And um, on the left, uh, a left photo on the left, you see the proposed um, raised parapet, and that's bare wood. Um, the mechanical units are painted blue, and the top railing is painted black. Uh, far to the right, you can see the flue extensions mocked up too. They're also bare wood. Okay, uh, next, Andrea. Uh, the, uh, the addition is invisible on most of 95th Street, so this is, these are photos showing no visibility. Um, next, um, Andrea. Um, here is a visibility study showing the view as you walk toward the alley. The alley, uh, like at 94th Street, the alley provides some view. Um, so uh, the, that red on the, on, on the map on the, on the right, the red is where, is where you could almost, po not in, almost possibly see the addition or the guardrail or something. And, and um, here and we're seeing um, at the top, we're seeing the mock-up um, uh, uh, and, and uh, on the side, on the uh, east facade at the alley view, um, you would be able to see uh, some of the uh, rooftop addition, but we're raising the parapet and uh, we're proposing to raise the parapet. And with the raised parapet, uh, there is like a, you can see the, um, you can see the railing and you can see a very, very little bit of, uh, of, of, the, uh, of the rooftop addition from like uh, two separate points. Uh, I wanna say that this view is not your view. Uh, this is the, uh, the zoom view. And it's, it's if, if you, um, I don't know if we have a, a, any superheroes that have zoom vision, but you would need zoom vision to see this view. Um, uh, the next uh, uh, slide shows you what you would actually see. Um, from the street. This is from the um, uh, from the, the area of most visibility. Um, and um, there you can, um, on the right, you can, with the parapet in place, you can see the, um, you can see the, um, the railing and you can see a little bit of the, um, uh, of the, uh, uh, of the rooftop addition. Um, I think, you know, what I would, I would, I could uh, uh, say with some confidence, minimal visible, visibility. Um, now, next. This is a view of uh, mock-up and montage, no, not mock-up, uh, existing in montage of the, uh, of the proposed east facade uh, window openings. This, um, this also does have the mock-up in, so you can see again with the raised parapet that once you get a little bit further in, so you're looking down the alleyway, you can't even see the railing. You're only seeing the windows at that point. Yeah, because that, that's yet another point on the street that where you can see the alley, but you can't see anything else. So we're talking about very limited point of view of anything. Um, next. Um, this, is the, uh, this is the visibility study of the, um, well, it's, yeah, of the, uh, the 94th Street um, view of the alleyway. And um, here you, you can see the rear addition. You can't, what you can't see is the, uh, it's hard to see anything because uh, this sidewalk bridge has been up forever. Um, but uh, you can, you do have a, a view of the, uh, of the, um, 
uh, the addition and from an even less amount of uh, points on the sidewalk as, uh, as on the uh, 95th Street side, as you can see from that map uh, next. This is the uh, this is the view the view where the the point on the sidewalk where you have the most visibility, um, and that is uh, that is the view from the rear. You can't quite see it, but you can also see through that alley the the, the five West Ninety Fifth Street um, addition that Landmarks approved um, uh, fifteen years ago. Yeah. And then again here, so this is the second floor window that you're seeing there, which is so nothing at first floor and basement level is visible from 94th Street. And then um, this is the existing window that you're seeing here. So you, you can't see the bottom of the existing window currently from 94th Street. Mm -hmm. And that's our presentation. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Um, questions? I see Clary has one. Right, I do. And I, if my phone rings, I'll, I'll suddenly mute because I'm expecting a call. But the one thing I don't understand is uh, with the two, two foot nine uh, corridor al along the alleyway at the roof level, the new roof addition, um, I'm unclear about what is going to be the parapet um, First of all, I'm surprised it's not three feet, but that's not our issue. Um, so at 2-9, what is the parapet you're talking about that will then be, uh, on, as I understand it, on the lot line facing the alleyway and partly visible? What is that material? And what's it? tell me about that, please. So, so this is the existing parapet on that east wall. And then this is the proposed. So we're proposing to use the exact same um, um, painted brick to match the existing and we'll use the same coping stone that currently exists. Um, so we're, we're tracking across from where we, instead of stepping down, we now step up and we're tracking across to where the, the rear chimney currently is. So we're not exceeding the height of that rear chimney. Uh -huh. And when you say painted brick, it's, it's common brick that's then painted to match what? I assume it's common brick, but to match what? Uh, to match what is, uh, is sorry, I'm just trying to find the right slide. Um, one of the renderings from the side. So it'll be in here. So, so to, match, um, to match the existing on the rest of that facade. So, um, so the this- brick matches the existing brick and then we'll paint it. Yes. Thank and you. There's, coping, there's a coping stone uh, across the top of the whole parapet, is that it? There's an existing uh, kind of terracotta colored coping stone and we'll use the same. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? Okay. Paige still here? Yes, no, yeah. no questions. Um, I'm a little intrigued by the alleyway and how you've managed to keep the terrace level, but um, that's your problem when you get to construction, but it seems very compact and, um, and appropriate um, that you don't see it from the front. You, do, you will see it from the backside of the building looking in, but I'm not sure that that's a problem because presumably other buildings alongside have also done similar actions. Thank you. Thank you. I do see we have some uh, attendees, uh, members of the public with either questions or comments. Is this a good time? Mm -hmm. All right, um, then Karen Young. Um, I'll promote as they go. Yeah, okay, so we'll start can with we, Karen. Can we take down the uh, screen at this point? Probably. Um, I'm just gonna, yeah, I'll stop. If I need to bring it back up to refer to anything, I'll just pop it back up. All right, Karen, can you unmute and uh, ask your question or share your comment? Unmute. Okay. Uh, tell, you, tell them you're Richard. Richard. Good evening. Uh, I'm actually Richard Schoenfeld, Karen Young's husband and I'm a member of the West 95th Street Block Association. And I'd like to tell you this evening, the tale of two renovations, if I may, 
1893, 1894, the Hartwell brothers built three houses on West 95th Street. Two of them survive. Those houses, number eight and number six, have been featured by AIA and its guide to New York City and have been termed architectural delights. In 2017, not 15 years ago, you approved a sub substantial renovation of number six that was largely interior, but included new skylights and condensers on the roof and a full width addition in the rear. That respectful renovation was completed in 2020. You are now being asked to approve re-renovation with a full sixth floor addition on the roof with bulkhead and ductwork duct work above that. At the rear of the building, there is a proposed two level extension of 50 square feet into the rear yard. These changes are not sensitive to the Hartwell creation or neighbors on West 94th Street or 95th Street where original extensions have been retained and there are no additional floors added. The mock-up of the proposed rooftop addition is readily visible above the alley between number six and its neighboring apartment complex. It is not in keeping with the size and mass of Mr. Hartwell's house. And the rear addition is inappropriate to my mind to the architecture of number six and to the historic district. Respecting history and character in this landmark zone is important to us as preservationists. Please consider the impact of this re-renovation on the Hartwell design and its neighborhood. Thank you for hearing me out. Okay, and would you please spell your name for our- Yes, I, I'm happy to. It's Richard, and the last name is Schoenfeld, S-C-H-O-E-N-F-E-L-D-T. Thank you. And then I see Carol Morrow. Is she promoted? It, should, it might take a second, but yes. And you, I think you also have, um, is it Karen Young? So uh, they both are promoted now. Okay, great. Wait, Karen Young is Richard Schoenfeld, my husband who just spoke. Got so it. I've been Got taking it. care of. Sorry about that. All right. It's okay. Thank you. Good. Thanks for the reminder. All right, Carol Morrow, could you please unmute and, and share your thoughts? Can you hear us? Yes. Okay, I am Ira Morrow. Carol is right next to me. Uh, we live at 350 Central Park West. And we live in the apartment that's probably most affected by the proposed uh, construction. I don't know if the board is aware that the uh, additional um, level um, on top of the building has already been entirely wood framed. Apparently this has been done before presenting the proposal uh, to the community board or to the land landmark preservation. So a lot of work has taken place already. And in fact, uh, we passed by the uh, building the other day, number six, and there's a stop work order plat right on the front door. So apparently the building project is already in violation of, um, of, of regulations. So the board, this uh, board should be aware of that problem. Uh, aside from the additional issues of noise, blocking views, blocking air, uh, also, um, which are direct concern to us in terms of quality of life. But uh, this, this proposal is entirely out of line with landmark preservation in terms of the other buildings on that block. And that should be the primary concern, especially those uh, proposals that are exterior uh, to the, to the uh, building uh, rather than interior that cannot be seen from the outside. Um, so, uh, the building, the, the community board should be aware of the fact that the wood framing has already taken place. Um, it looks like it's going to be a, a good 17 to 19 feet as already uh, been, uh, been revealed. Uh, and um, th this has been done without getting community board approval. 
So they put the wagon in front of the horse in this case. I don't know why they did that or why they were allowed to do that. Um, yes. I can speak to the to the process and to the stop work order. Uh, uh, you're, not, you're not on the screen. You okay. Can you see me? No. No, oh, sorry. Okay, I have a picture here, but uh, unfortunately, I don't think you can see it of, of the framing work that's already been done. I'll try um, to promote. I'm sorry? He can't be seen. He just said, I'm sorry. Mark, Mark is working on that uh, to see if we can fix that. But I think we've already seen the framing as part of the presentation, but maybe there's something else to, to show. Yeah, I suspect that they're talking about the mock-up, but- um, No, we're not talking about the mock-up. We're talking about uh, around 19 feet tall of, of wood framing. Um, and the mock, it goes well beyond the mock-up. We're talking about the fact that all of this wood framing has already taken place uh, well beyond any mock-up. Uh, so, okay. uh, you know, we've I, witnessed- I, 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 So we've I've tried to promote them and it doesn't seem to be working. I'm not sure why. So I apologize, but we don't, we can't seem to see what it is that you want to show us. Okay. All right, so may, maybe we should ask Andrew to respond to that. So the, the wood framing that is that is on the roof, that that is the mock-up. Oh, is that the view that we're looking at? So the, the approximately 17 to 19 feet, that's to the top of the stair bulkhead. That is the, the mock-up, which was uh, Landmarks provided, LPC provided a, a permit and the DOB approved a permit um, for that construction. The stop work order on the site is due to the previous applicant of record. That was the previous architects on the job and um, equivalent structural engineer, mechanical engineer. They withdrew from the application we are in the process of superseding that application with the DOB. Um, so that stop, stop work order on the, the main um, kind of job, as it were, has not been lifted yet because we have not completed that superseding process. But we were uh, approved a permit by LPC and the DOB for the construction of the mock-up, which is what is on the building. I, I, uh, this is Carol Morrow, the wife of Ira Morrow. I'd like to make another point. Uh, which is the commission may know that 350 Central Park West is undertaking a major scaffolding project in which they'll be uh, building scaffolding up to the top floors and fixing the points. Uh, this is going to take through 2023. And it seems to me that it's appropriate for the community board to consider how much major work that affects all of the tenants on the street, the building, the safety, uh, the ability nice. of, of children to walk to the uh, school across the street is now going to be compounded by what looks like a very long-term project with its own vehicles in the street, its own noise, its own danger, its own workers holding up the street, transporting uh, materials and so on. So I, I would, bring this to the commission's attention, I would ask the commission to consider whether it is appropriate for the project at 6 West 95th Street to be delayed until at least the scaffolding work on West 95th Street has been completed. And then a, this project can start without the compounding effects of the scaffolding and pointing work on 350 uh, Central Park West. All right, thank you for that information. Um, Peter has had his hand up for a while and then let's get back to the, to the board. Uh, are you talking to me, Kay? I am talking to you, Peter. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so I have a question. It appeared in a couple of the pictures that there was a panel on the building adjacent that was being overshadowed by the um, structure. And I was curious if that is a solar panel that um, is going to lose its viability because of this or what was happening with that? You mean on, uh, on, on number eight? On five, I, uh, the, on five West uh, across from- um, uh, No, it was right next to the, um, uh, I'm sorry. I did not follow the, um, uh, mm -hmm. if you go through a couple of the pictures, um, uh, oh, 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 shoot. 
Um, um, probably at the beginning, um, Andrew. There was, there was, it was. I can see it on my camera. That right there, where my, where the person's hand is. Um, I believe that showed up in some of the pictures. And I was curious if that was somebody's, the next door neighbor's this? solar panel. Back one. It's already covered up with some kind of tarp. Yeah, this one? Um, I'm sorry. Um, no, that's not the one I was thinking of, but um, uh, it was in the drawing. It was in the um, in a photograph. Is it this one here? It's delivered right there. Yes. I don't believe that's a solar panel. It, it certainly doesn't look like a solar panel, but um, um, it, yeah, it's not on our property, but it, I, I don't believe it's a solar panel from, um, from looking at it. Okay, when well, it, it just, it showed up in some of the pictures and it was a concern if, if that's a neighbor's um, structure that it gets lost in, it, um, underneath your structure. If it is a solar panel, then I, I would I would guess that the 16 story building next door is already shading it, but I don't believe it is a solar panel. Okay. Um, well, just wanted to make sure that yeah. in the process we weren't creating more problems. Okay, thank you. Thanks for you. All right. Um, Excuse me, okay. Yes, yes. Um, there's a Spencer Mains that's also been promoted. Um, that's the gentleman who's been pointing his camera out the window for us. Um, and I believe that he wanted to speak as well. Perfect. Yep. I just want to say I'm right next door. I'm a renter and I'm in support of this project because it's fun seeing buildings come up next door. I don't, I've never seen it from the street. I don't think that's an issue. Um, I'm a little disappointed it's not big enough to hold extra bedrooms because we do need a lot more extra rooms here in the Upper West Side because rents are too high. And also your average New Yorker has carbon emissions only a third of the average American. So we need a lot more New Yorkers. <laughs> That's all. all right. I saw your name. <laughs> Thank you. Spencer Maines, that is. M-A-I-N-E-S. M-A-Y-N-E-S. Yep, Spencer Maines. All right. A uh, renter you. right across the street in the apartment that you talked about earlier as having the scaffolding over With it. With a little hood over it, right. Yeah, that... That was the landlord. We didn't want that. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good luck with that one. All right. Thank you very much. All right. I think we're ready to go back to the uh, committee. Um, or Peter, did you have something else? Or are you all right? Your hand is still up, Peter Arnson. No. Okay. Um, all right. I am seeing questions or comments from Paige and Peter Sampton. Um, so why don't we do that, Paige? Thank you. I just, well, um, we were learning more about um, the building. I did check the DOB. There is a partial stop work order on the building. Um, it does not disclose whether it is a, a, a zoning, structural, or other omission that they are seeking. I suspect it's probably inspections from the previous owner that started work, um, but we should follow that. So I would ask that maybe the committee um, investigate that further through Jessie um, and ask her to follow up just so that we're clear. Right. And for that reason, I'm gonna ex ab abstain until I know more about it. Okay. We can look into that. Thank you, Paige. Thank you. Uh, Peter. Um, thank you. Um, are we asking questions now or are we giving our opinion? Uh, well, I've, I, I always do try to distinguish between those, but uh, why don't we start with a question? Um, well, um, uh, I guess my question is also opinion that the, the uh, I wonder why the um, height of the um, penthouses is so high. Um, it seems that it's um, but quite aggressive in terms of its height. Um, I know it's next to a tall building, but it still affects um, uh, the open space uh, between the brownstones to the south. Uh, so that's a question of um, why it is that high and also why there are different colors for the roof. Why there's the 
the um, gray metal and the black together instead of a more uniform color that would make it blend a little bit more as a rooftop. Um, those are questions, um, but they can also be opinions, I guess. <laughs> okay, you're talking about the 10 foot height of the the uh, addition itself and then the, the stair bulkhead above it, or both things? Yeah, yeah. Um, and the colors, right? Yeah, and the colors. Okay, does somebody wanna address that for us? Uh, so I can speak to the to the height. We have. I'm going to pull up the screen again and go to the section. Um, it's probably the close to the last slide. Here we go. So the existing roof line is this dotted line you can see here. So we've struck as a new level for our. Um, our additional floor, we've kind of gone at the low end of the existing roof line for that. So that's suppressing our existing uh, our ceiling heights on the floor below um, within the kind of bedroom and corridor spaces to um, between eight feet and nine feet. And then we're, we're holding the same for an, uh, a, a kind of eight foot to eight foot six ceiling height on the interior on the additional story with the roof build up and then the ceiling um, the drop ceiling for the mechanical, the roof buildup having a, um, for the energy code ratings, needing a certain thickness of insulation to maintain a, a ceiling height that we feel appropriate for the additional story. That's what generates the, um, the height of the additional story. And we've tried to suppress that within, within the existing structure as much as we feel like we can. Um, the bulkhead at eight feet above that, um, we by code have to hold a seven foot um, interior head height on the stair and at the landing. So then we're allowing another 12 inches worth of, of roof build up there, which is very skinny to be trying to um, do in terms of the kind of energy code. That's really as thin as is possible for that. Okay, thank you. Peter, did that help? Yeah. And, um, and, and the colors? Colors. The material. So the material, we were making a, a, de, a kind of design decision to tie the lower portion of the additional story into that existing gutter that is this here. And that's a kind of weathered zinc uh, gutter already. So that the, the lowest portion of it that is basically extending up to the height that the existing roof does at the front of the building um, is kind of differentiating between what was existing building height worth of roof and what is new uh, new material. We we have intentionally kind of created a continuity between the the kind of paneling of this this metal rain screen and then the the paneling of this kind of mansard section of roof, so that there's a con continuity between them, and then it feels like one flows into the other. But we we felt at least that um, differentiating that bottom portion helped with the overall reading of the addition from the rear. Um, although understanding that that is kind of a an a subjective um, view that we have towards that. Well, it makes it seem as if there are two elements there. I mean, it's not, um, you know, if you were doing this as a, as a uh, um, slope roof or something like that, it would be more one, one material, but you have two very different materials coming together in this um, basically one story well, I guess it's a two-story addition. And then the railing is um, a different color again. Uh, let me go to the rear view. So this is that view from the rear. If you kind of zoom in, that's what the reading that you get. So this is the view that we're talking about. Yeah. Okay, right. Um, but you, you don't have a view from the courtyard. Uh, as in within the, the rear yard, as within our rear yard? Yes. Uh, we don't have that view in this presentation, no. Well, that I mean, wouldn't you, be from you the have street. The views from the street, but not from the courtyard itself, right? Yeah, but that's what you're supposed to do, give you a view from the street. From the public thoroughfares is where we've provided the viewpoints. 
well, the courtyard is still, um, it may not be the same degree of importance, but it still is. Yeah, we do consider the impact of the rear yards on the overall donut of the block. Um, okay, well, let's hold that for a second. Uh, Madge, did you have a question? Too? Just a quick one. This isn't the same owner who's just done a renovation, is it? This is a different owner from the person who did the renovation that was just finished. It's the same owner. The same owner is doing a second renovation? Uh, yes, but the, with the changeover of architects from the previous one to the current one. It's the same owner. So, so it's an, a new architect, same owner. And I, th I think you are explaining kind of a difference of thinking that came with uh, the home office, uh, the shift to the home office. Is that exactly? Is that what kind of instigated this? Uh, so within the past, since he began the project, when he applied for the original permit in 2017, obviously there's been COVID and the need for home offices. He's also got married in that time. So there's a, a need for more space within the house. Um, and a general um, an amount of dissatisfaction with the way that the interior layouts landed, meaning that the, a need for more space has kind of arisen. Okay. Does that make, yeah, okay. Uh, Mark, did you? Are, are we commenting now or is it just questions? I think we're ready to move to the comments, right? Okay, so because minor, minor comments more than questions, I appreciate the, the clarity of the presentation, um, which we've come to expect from Mary, so thank you. Um, the, um, um, I wanna first address the construction impacts that one of the members of the community mentioned. Um, and unfortunately, uh, as the folks who live on 96th Street will tell you, that's just unfortunately one of the aspects of um, uh, of construction in New York City um, and the standard of appropriateness that we are held to has to do with the visual impact of the construct of the built structure, not whether it would make more sense from a community standpoint to phase out or phase uh, the, the work. So I appreciate the concern that's being raised, but that's beyond the scope of this committee. Um, there may be a way in which our, our um, district office can be helpful yeah. in, in that sort of thing. And we're glad to do that. Um, but it doesn't create grounds for us to uh, approve or disapprove anything. Um, what does strike me as within our purview of concern is the ceiling heights and overall height of the proposed addition. Um, if I understood the explanation that was given just a couple of minutes ago correctly, the ceiling heights proposed for the rooftop addition are taller than, the, than those that, uh, of the floors that are beneath it. And in my estimation, what's appropriate for a rooftop addition, hearkening back to its origins as, a, um, uh, as more modest structures, is that they should be smaller, not higher than, um, th than the, the ones that are below it. So um, an interior height of over eight feet, and I believe that you've got a ceiling height of eight foot, eight and a half, maybe more, um, with an overall effect because of the insulation of nine feet to 10 strikes me as going way over the, the, the limit of appropriateness. And so I would hope that that could be brought down. Um, other than that, and while I appreciate the impact on the visuals of the neighbors, um, uh, the, the, the choice of materials, I hear Peter Sampton's point, um, but, but the choice of materials, the fenestration patterns, and the arrangement of the volume is completely consistent with things that our committee has approved in the past and that I understand that LPC to have approved in the past, we take a somewhat more restrictive view than they do. Um, and so I would, um, I would think that this would, uh, I would be prepared to, to approve it provided that the ceiling heights could be brought down. That's where I'm going, thanks. Mm -hmm. I think that's valid. Valid point. I have a quick question. The, the, the four windows on, <clears throat> on the east elevation, those are on the lot line, I assume? Yes. Thank you. Um, any other comments from the committee? Uh, uh, Clark. Yeah, I just, following, following Mark, I just, I didn't quite get about the ceiling height. Is, is Mark correct that the interior 
ceiling height on the latest edition on top is actually a higher ceiling height than on the floor below, which you are lowering somewhat? It is the same as the floor below. That's what I understood. Oh, really? Yeah, they're both eight foot six ceiling height, and then they're both smaller than all of the other floors in terms of ceiling height. Okay, I was confused about in, that also. In that case, while I don't love that height, I, I guess, my, first of all, I just want to say, I think you're very lucky. However, it came about that the facade, the front facade is as preserved as it is and the neighboring one too. They make a very nice pair on the front. It's not what we're talking about tonight, but it's a nice look, um, nice history there. But um, given the responses we've heard, et cetera, I, um, and as well as our history of, of other rooftop additions and other various uh, accretions, um, I, I would be ready to vote in favor of this. Thank you, Clary. Jay, you have a hand up. Yeah, actually, I had the same uh, observation that Clary did. I thought that they had said that the ceiling heights were eight and a half feet, uh, uh, the same as the ones below. And obviously, you're not going to make ceiling heights. You can't make ceiling heights less than eight foot, uh, six inches under these circumstances. I, I think the design and the materials are fine and I'm prepared to approve it. Oh, and one other one yeah. other comment at the risk of seeming facetious, but the question of simultaneous projects uh, going on, uh, certainly if the residents of 350 think it's too much, uh, uh, the, the people uh, uh, taking on this project could ask them to delay as well. So I, I don't think that's uh, a reasonable request. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Thank you, Jay. Anybody else? Um, everybody else all right? Or we're we ready to move to some sort of a... Oh, Clary, you have your hand up again? Oh, no, that's a mistake. Okay. I should have lowered it. All yeah. right, no worries. Thanks for noticing. All right, so shall we take a vote on this resolution to approve the application as presented? Uh, Second. All right. Um, Mark? Yes. Okay. Yes. Peter? No. Paige? You're muted, Paige. We can't hear you. Abstain. Clary? Yes. Sue? Abstain. Josh? Yes. I'm a yes, Jay? Yes. And Madge? Yes. Staying all, right. all right, so I'll count the votes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, four, one against, two abstain, zero abstain for cause. Any non-committee board members still here? Yes, Madeline. Okay, yes. Madeline, what is your vote? Yes. Thank you. So that's seven, two, one. Seven one two. Seven one two. No two people abstained. That's oh, the two. That's the two. <laughs> okay. And then one zero zero zero. One zero okay. zero zero. Yes. Okay, and you have a date at uh, LPC. Um, we are on the calendar for for June fourteenth, and that is assuming that we um, get our uh, deal clean the the objection sheet. In the uh, in um, in time. All right, that's Flag Day, you know. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, we'll see you then. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me. All right, and last is uh, two two five West Ninety Ninth Street, St Michael's Church. Uh, application to LPC for barrier free access. Correct. Ready when you are, applicant. All right, um, my name's Richard McElhenney. That's M-C-E-L-H-I-N-E-Y. And I'm the principal in charge for Richard McElhenney Architects for the project. So let me put my screen up if I can, yes.
Can you all see that? Yes. Okay, great. Um, so I think you're probably all familiar with, with the church. It's at the corner of, of 99th Street and Amsterdam Avenue. Um, it's, it's absolutely wonderful Romanesque um, group of buildings. There's the church itself, the sanctuary, a parish house and a, and a rectory, and then a garden between the three buildings. Um, to, to be clear about the issues that Landmark has, Landmarks has asked us to, to discuss at their hearing, um, it includes the 99th Street Garden. There are some hardscape additions. We're rebuilding some low garden walls and we're modifying the pathways on the Eastern part of that garden. Um, we are altering a couple of doors to provide uh, the handicapped access. Um, and um, the stair and ramp um, at Amsterdam Avenue um, side, again, to provide uh, barrier-free access. Um, we're providing a glass canopy over, over one of those doors. And there's a new skylight structure uh, between the sanctuary and the, um, and the parish house. And then last issue that they're asking us to discuss is the 99th Street replacement gates. If you're familiar with that garden, there's a wrought iron fence there and in it there are two gates. Um, those gates have to be um, modified to, again, to eliminate a step um, from the sidewalk onto the site. Um, and so those gates have to be modified and redesigned. So that's, that's an overview of the issues um, before landmarks. And um, what I'd like to do is ask John Avery, who's on the vestry of the, of the church, to say a few words at the outset here um, about the motivations for the project. Just to, um, Kay, can I just ask a quick question? Just to be clear, that list of items that we just saw now, are all of those uh, being reviewed by us? They're all being reviewed by Landmark, so I'm assuming they'll all be reviewed by you. So they'll all be part of a public hearing. Correct. Okay, then there are. Okay, business. thank you. Okay, hey, uh, thank you, Richard. Yes, I, I'm uh, John Avery. I'm on the vestry at St. Michael's. The, the vestry is essentially the board of the church, and uh, we've been working closely with uh, uh, Richard's uh, company to develop the plan. Uh, our complex it was started in uh, 1890 and the rector and his predecessor at the time both had uh, very strong community visions. And uh, as a result in the parish house when that was built, we had a health clinic in the parish house. There was a gym gymnasium there was a theater that was used by both the community as well as the congregation. And the building was intended to be and really was a community resource. So let's fast forward to the 21st century and you begin to see the challenges of remaining relevant and attractive to the community when you have a building that essentially has not changed very much since the horse-drawn age. Uh, the, all the access um, into the building is exactly like it was uh, 120 years ago. So uh, today that means you have people who struggle to enter the building, if they can enter it at all. Uh, it's, it's very difficult uh, if somebody is in a wheelchair, for instance, and, but even just people with canes and mobility issues struggle to come into the building. Uh, the second floor performance hall, which is it's, it's a wonderful space, entirely underutilized because it's too hard to get people up there. It's just not um, accessible enough to the public to, to really make it the resource that it could be both for us as a congregation and for the community because uh, you know we do rent these spaces. Uh, we struggle to move supplies that we need to use for our feeding program, which we operate on Saturdays, just getting heavy supplies in and out of the building and up and down is a major issue. It's a, it's a rate limiting factor for the feeding program. 
uh, one of our tenants, and we have a number of tenants in the building, is, uh, but one of them is a school, and they were almost denied a letter of non-objection by DOB last year due to a lack of ADA compliant access into the school. This could have been a real crisis for them. And it was all related to this, uh, a disagreement about access. Uh, the sanctuary itself, uh, aside from being beautiful, it's a wonderful performance space, and, but it's inaccessible for uh, people with mobility challenges. So it, it's used by the community as well as the church for performance, but there are issues getting into it. So you begin to get the idea of why we thought it was important to uh, proceed with this program. Um, we're convinced that creating accessibility will not only serve uh, the community according to 21st century standards, we really believe it will literally help us survive as we move through the balance of the century. Uh, we have the good fortune of being vibrant today, but uh, can we really stay that way if the building doesn't fundamentally update itself, if it becomes perceived as too outmoded? We're, we're worried about this. And as you know, the, church is, uh, the city is full of churches that have faded into virtual irrelevance where people no longer want to use the buildings and where they've become a sad shadow of what they used to be. And we at St. Michael's don't want to go there. Uh, we want to, uh, we don't want to become a sort of picturesque museum, which uh, is not useful to the community. It, it looks nice, but it's not usable. So uh, that's why we'd like to increase the connection, the vital connection be between both uh, the congregation and the community, the wider community, and the accessibility plan you're about to hear is, we believe, absolutely essential to both that, our mission, and our long-term outlook and staying relevant as we move through the balance of this century. And we, we have a limited window of opportunity for a variety of reasons at the church to do this work now. And um, we're excited to be able to do it. And we just think it's essential to continuing to be what we are today. So uh, Richard's gonna take you through the plan now. Thank you, John. So these are a couple of images of the, of the original buildings. As John said, the sanctuary on the right uh, completed in 1890. And then uh, about 12 years later, the parish house um, was built um, just to the west of the, of the um, and I'll call your attention since it's one of the aspects we'll be discussing, uh, the garden. Um, it was initially at grade uh, with a fairly simple uh, fence and actually without gates. Um, so we'll come back to that in a little bit. So this is a, a 3D rendering of the complex, obviously the sanctuary on the right, the parish house uh, in the middle um, with, its, with the garden in front and then the rectory uh, to the west of that. 99th Street is on the bottom of this slide and Amsterdam is on the right hand side. And these are some of the existing conditions, drawings, and photographs. This is the south facing elevation. Um, again, I'm sure you're all pretty familiar with it. Um, and then on the, the lower right hand two photographs show the existing uh, gates and fence and garden and entrance access. This is the Amsterdam elevation uh, facing east um, with, the, with the photographs of it below. And this is the rear, uh, the north facing elevation, um, not visible really from anywhere. It's a pretty narrow alley. So the photographs are sort of oblique, but it's, um, it's sort of a utilitarian uh, portion of the building. And then this is the west facing elevation. Uh, again, uh, brick changed to brick from the limestone because it's, it's really not particularly visible. It faces the, the building next door. 
So the first, the first topic uh, that Landmarks is um, discussing with us is the 99th Street Garden. Um, we are altering the pathways. Obviously, we need to slope them, um, remove any steps in the, in the pathways, um, and provide access into the building. Um, that also entails um, the, the adjusting the walls that have been built up since that original photograph you saw. They've been built up to, um, to provide, I think, more topsoil for the garden, but they are a later, later addition. Um, so we're talking about this uh, garden right here. So again, here's that original photo with the garden at grade, uh, simple fence and, and no gates right now uh, at the earlier part. Then this, this is the low wall, the cobble wall that was built um, at some subsequent date and the concrete sidewalks. And then you can see the, um, cast, the wrought iron fence that was added along 99th Street at some, some later date. This is the existing plan. Um, the main entry to the parish house is, is um, sort of a little bit west of center. And then there's a pathway that there's some steps down into the basement of the sanctuary. And then a little bit beyond that, further steps down um, to the school that John referred to, which is on the lower level of the parish house. And then the right-hand door provide access, provides access to the, to the rest of the basement of the sanctuary. This is the proposed plan. Um, the dotted line, to the left of the dotted line, there's no work. We're not working on the western portion of the garden as part of this project. We are working on the eastern portion. The objective is to eliminate any step at the street and provide a ramp, an ADA compliant ramp um, to a landing in the middle and then a further ramp down to that lower level which provides access through the right-hand door to an elevator, which then will connect all four levels of the parish house and, and, and the levels of the uh, sanctuary as well. Um, a change to the garden is um, as that ramp slopes down, um, rather than allow the garden level to sort of loom above you, we are stepping down, these are steps down at that uh, northeast corner of the garden so that the, the levels of the garden sort of follow the ramp uh, down. Um, the fact that we're ramping down and can get into the sanctuary um, more easily here actually allows us to create new green space uh, on the right adjacent to the, adjacent to the sanctuary. And then here's some details of that ramp. The middle one shows the ramp from the street, the location of the gate, ramping down to a landing and then ramping down further to that lower door. The, um, the detail in the lower left shows the uh, stepping down of the, um, those three terraced levels um, to follow the, follow the ramp down to that rear entry. And then here are some details of the um, rebuilding of those garden walls. Um, right now, they're not in particularly good shape. Um, they're really just um, stacked uh, granite cobbles. Um, there's no, and they, they are, some of them are leaning away from the garden because of the, the surcharge of the garden earth load. Um, and then there's no coping stone. So moisture is getting in from the top and they're subject to freeze thaw. So they are cracking and, and beginning to disintegrate. So. So we are providing footings for these. We will reuse the existing cobbles. So the face of those stone walls will appear unchanged, but we are providing a footing to stabilize them and some concrete backup, which will largely be, be uh, concealed by the garden itself when it's restored. And then a coping to keep the, uh, to keep the water out and also to provide a seating surface for um, people who choose to linger in the garden. Um, so are there any questions about that part before I move on to the doors? I, I have one. Go ahead. Um, so did you consider or is there an issue of lowering the garden to its original grade level? That would require um, scraping everything down, um, you know, including the area where we're not, where there's no work planned. Um, 
and, and it would lessen the topsoil. There's quite a lot of bedrock here. Um, so it would lessen the topsoil and it would really lessen the ability to, to plant. There, I, you probably know the garden, but there's some beautiful trees there. Um, I'm not sure those would be viable if we scrape mm. them back down to the, to the lower level. I have a bedrock question there. Uh, you, you need to get rid of some bedrock on the right side of uh, this diagram, right? That's, uh, that's correct. The church wall. There, there will be some here. Can that There's, be removed this... without compromising the, uh, uh, the sanctuary structure? Yes, we're, we're not. Um, this stair already goes down to the, um, the basement level mm -hmm. of, the, um, of, the, uh, of the sanctuary. And this piece of sort of rock outcropping is going to be cut back a little bit, but it will largely be maintained. Okay. So, so along the sanctuary edge, there's, um, you know, there's very little impact uh, of the level. Um, okay. On this side, we are, we will be taking out these steps and the ramp will, you know, come back a bit. But again, the, um, the floor level of this lower level of the parish house is at this lowest level. So we won't be anywhere near the, near the footing. Um, you know, it's well below that, that, um, that basement level. So we shouldn't have any structural effect on, the, on either building. Thank you. Any other questions or should we move to the next area? Okay. Um, looks like we can move. I mean, you understand we all could cry listening to this. The fact that you said you want to improve things, you want to restore things. We've been through a heck of a month. <laughs> <laughs> so we understand. So, so we understand. All good stuff to hear. We, as John said, we, we, we don't want to go there. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so the, the uh, next issue that Landmarks is looking at is the lowered and altered doors at two primary entrances. So to explain that, um, one is the, is the couple of doors at the bottom of the ramp. Um, and I'll explain exactly what's happening there. And then the other one is one of the, actually not a primary entrance, but a secondary entrance on the Amsterdam Dam Avenue side. So first to look at Amsterdam Avenue and the photographs at the top of the page, um, the second photo here shows the main entrance, which will be unchanged. Um, and then to the south of that is, is an open loggia. And then south of that, there is a secondary door, which, which um, gives directly into the sanctuary. It might be easier to see in this uh, top drawing here with the main entrance on the right, the loggia um, to the south of that, and then a secondary entrance into the sanctuary. Um, to the south of that. So our proposal to look at, and then the plan, the existing plan is on the right there. Um, so that loge is sort of a dead end, really. It's um, largely aesthetic. Um, you can see from the two right-hand photos at the top that it's actually used for storage because it's used, it really serves no other purpose. Um, so the proposal for access to the sanctuary is to, to look at the plan again to open the end of that loggia and create a ramp up into the vestibule of the church. So um, we would just be opening this piece of wall, which isn't terribly visible from the street. Um, and then um, as in order to access that um, in a barrier free way, we are proposing to lower this Southern door. So you can see that we've added a panel above the door um, and lowered that door and we removed these three, three steps here in order to create that access to that ramp. Um, the, um, because of the slope of the ramp, um, there is also an active gate in the loggia where there are, there are four steps up to that. Um, we are proposing to continue to have those steps be uh, active. So we are, we put a landing inside that gate and we are removing one riser from that um, set of steps. So we're down one riser in order to hit this landing, which is at the sort of um, in the, in the um, rise of the ramp. 
So that lowering door, uh, here's a detail of that panel. So it's back in the plane of the, um, of the door. Um, so it, we've kept the stone profiles and limits and extents of that stone unchanged. So you perceive that, that original configuration. Um, so here's the existing um, uh, photo on the left. You see the steps leading up to that secondary entrance. And here's a rendering of the uh, proposed where those steps are gone and that panel is added to make up the difference uh, above. So before we go around the corner, any, any questions on this? Anybody? Um, just quickly, I thought that the door, that, it's very clever and I think you're handling the changes in level wonderfully, but the existing entrance was a doorway. The proposed entrance isn't an entrance anymore? Or does no, that it, is, it is an entrance. Uh -huh. it, it is an entrance and we'll be using the same door. Um, gotcha. we're, we're just, it's, it's still, so this is the existing. Yep. It's an entrance into the sanctuary now. Yeah, we're going to use it as an entrance into the ramp. Just go back to your um, the, the the new work, um, if you could. The uh, rendering. Yes, please. Thank you. Yes, yes. But this is shows, still a door. But you have a fence in front of it. It's it's that fence is existing. If you look at the photograph on the left, there's so, a gate. There's oh, there a, gate a gate in that fence. Ah, that's yeah, I'm sorry, say. that's not clear, but there's yeah. a gate. No, in that's that fine. Fence. We're gonna move on. It this is. <laughs> So Is reassuring. It, I'm so happy. Thank you. Isn't that for wheelchairs to go in? That that's why it's changing. There's not going to be any steps at the door. Um, no, it's it's really not that entrance is really not used very much. You know, it's mostly used as ventilation for the church. John, John could jump in and correct yeah, me. Where yeah, I we wrong, uh, but. we we do have a. Uh, uh, one of these uh, improvised ramps that we put down there sometimes to get a wheelchair in, but- That's what I remember. <laughs> it, it, yeah, it's at a very steep pitch and is not a, you, you, it's not practical. We, we did look at this at, in order to move wheelchairs directly into the sanctuary. The, it, the pitch is just uh, too steep without changing the exterior appearance. That's why we, are creating the ramp through the loggia so so that the exterior appearance has minimal change but you've got the ADA compliant access into the building okay so this will be a wheelchair um, and absolutely that's yes that, that is the plan yes. so so you the wheelchair will be able to go through this modified door make a right turn okay right, up the ramp and the loggia and basically it comes out into the vestibule behind the main door there and you're into the building. Okay. <clears throat> Peter Arnson, did you have a, something you wanted to ask? Yes. Um, yes. Um, it looks good. I guess I was concerned um, you, with lowering the door there. Um, yes. It's going to need to do a lot of maintenance because of um, rats and because of rot. Um, just um, we haven't had any flooding on Amsterdam and I don't anticipate it, um, but there has been problems with the um, drainage system off the roof. And um, just know that, that that door is gonna need to be very well maintained and you'll need to um, watch out for rats. So that's yeah, all. No, that, that's, that's fair enough. It's, um, it's, it's really the, the um, stewardship that goes with um, you know, providing a no more than a half inch level change for, for someone who's in a wheelchair. Got it. Well, Madeline's point about the ramp was, um, I, I had hoped to, I was going to mention that, but she already did and you already answered it. So that's great. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and it's, as John had mentioned, it's not just wheelchairs. It's anybody who's, you know, mobility challenge. It's, it's, um, mothers with strollers. It's, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, Larger swath of the population. I think. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else here? Um, it's clear. 
So to go to the other doors that are under discussion here, these are the doors at the bottom of the ramp, that lower level, um, photographs on the left, of course. Um, right now they're accessed by steps down to this lower level. Um, the school entrance is on the left and the, um, it's a bilingual school. Um, and then the door on the right is the access to the uh, basement of the sanctuary. So, um, and there's a step there, as you can see, there's steps into these two doors. And clearly these doors are not original. These are hollow metal doors. Um, the intention is to level that area below, again, make it barrier free um, and um, allow people access um, through that door on the right to the elevator, um, which, which again connects them to all levels of the parish house and, and the sanctuary. Um, we're using the sort of color and the profiles of the other doors, other entrance doors to the building um, it was very important to us that this and to the church that this entry be seen as equivalent to other entries, that it's a, you know, it's a point of universal access. It's not just handicapped. It's, as I say, mothers with strollers. It's, you know, it's, it's any number of, of um, uh, congregants or the community or access, as John said, to the recital hall on the second floor. Um, this is, you know, this is a, this is a sort of integral part of the of the access to the whole complex. Uh, Richard, uh, I, I would point out that the parish house is, whereas the church is mainly busy on Sundays, the parish house is very busy seven days a week. Uh, there, there is the school in the basement that has those very steep stairs. You have to get down to it. There's another school inside the, the upper floors of the parish house, lots of 12-step programs, other tenants, a huge number of people are moving in and out of the building. And the, the steps into the main door of the parish house are very steep. They, they will ultimately be part of the plan, although not in this phase. And we, we just need a safer, uh, easier way for people of, of um, any physical disability at all to get into the building. Right. And this is a view obviously on the left is the existing and on the right is the proposed. So as that ramp goes down, um, those doors will be, uh, the intent is that they be sort of visually and conceptually as well as physically accessible, uh, visible and accessible, and that that becomes an intuitive route um, into the buildings. Um, here you see the garden stepping down to sort of follow the path of the, of the, um, of the, uh, of the um, sidewalk there. Hmm. So um, any questions on, on this part of it, the access to the lower level? Yeah, Peter. Uh, drainage. Um, I have been in and out of that um, entrance for many years, and it was easy for water to accumulate, particularly in the drain when it got clogged. And okay. How are you going to handle that? So you can perhaps see here, but at, at the bottom edge of every slope of the ramp, there's a trench drain. So here, and then down at the bottom, and then there's also an areaway drain at the bottom. So there's, and then there's an area drain actually where this, uh, these steps lead down into the sanctuary as well. So there's really four drainage points. Um, they'll be new and not part of this application, but part of the project is a new storm line um, in, the, in, you know, under this part of the garden. So, so the storm line will be new, so there won't be clogs and backups in the same way. You know, a trench drain is less susceptible to the clogs and backups just because there's so much more surface area. You know, it's not like a small area drain. Um, and then there's redundancy of these drains. There's four of them in this run. So, so I think everything's being done, which is, which is, you know, more than sensible, more than reasonable. And there is, there is redundancy and the infrastructure which supports that redundancy is also going to be new. So, so I think we're covering the basis on that. 
Okay, thank thanks. You. Michelle, you had a question. Yeah, I'd like to know if both doors open the same way and is that in or out? Uh, so okay. this the door, the, the door on the left really just, um, it's, a, it's really a secondary door to the school. So there, so it, um, it um, the main entrance of the school is on the left. So this door will rarely if ever be used. Um, which is one reason why we put glass in the right-hand door because the light from inside that space will sort of flow out and that'll be more sort of welcoming and, and attractive. They swing out um, and one has the, has the hinges on the left and one has the hinges on the right. The reason that we did that over here is because as you're coming down, you know, the, the strike side being in the handle being on the near side just makes it that much more accessible and easy. So we, we kept the, the operating hardware away from the sort of re-entry corners, which just seemed more generous. Okay, thank you. All right. All right. So this really recaps something we've already talked about, but Landmarks is broken into two separate pieces. So, so we're gonna do it. Um, same drawings. <laughs> This is, this is about the ramp as opposed to about the door. So, um, so I've really explained how that ramp works and thanks to your questions, it, it's, it's I hope clear now. But um, again, they've called it stair and ramp alterations as opposed to door alterations. So this is really about the reduction of the stairs here, the re reduction by one riser of the stairs in the middle run of the ramp, and then the introduction of the ramp in the loggia is really the, the issue here. Um, so same, same, pretty much same issue. I don't know if there are further questions. It sounds like we covered them last time. Glass canopy, a new skylight structure. So this is there. Uh, there this is the uh, new canopy here at those two lower doors. Um, and then there's a skylight, which we're uh, introducing between the sanctuary and the parish house. This is not visible from the public way, but landmarks you know, felt it was still a subject of discussion. So we'll look at those two things. Um, so um, the, there's the existing, again, if you can see the photo, existing conditions photos on the top, there's the existing sort of cloth uh, canopy um, with the emblazoned with the name of the school. Um, their entrance is on the left. Um, it's, it's opaque. It does create sort of a dark, um, somewhat forbidding um, hole here. Um, so as this is becoming the main, one of the main entrances, and again, an entrance that we want to encourage people to use and that they um, should feel comfortable using. Um, we wanted to um, lighten that up and not have that same sort of cave-like feeling down there. So the existing fabric awning is illustrated here on the top. And then we're proposing a glazed canopy um, so that light would penetrate in the, the space would still be protected, you know, as you enter the doors, as the, as, um, you know, students and their parents enter the school, um, it really does need some covering and some weather protection here. So we're proposing, um, we've tried to devise the sort of lightest, most ethereal, um, and transparent, um, covering that we can devise. Um, here's some details. It's a stainless steel system, um, you know, glazed, glazed from above. Um, so we've tried to make it sort of as light again as possible. So that's the, um, so are there questions about this? I could actually go back to, you know, what we didn't include here, which we probably should have is this view. Um, so here it is again, um, trying to bring light into what had been sort of a dark um, uh, and somewhat forbidding uh, end point to that ramp, which uh, feeling that we wanted to, to dissipate. 
Any questions about that? Uh, what is the blue there? Is that glass? The, the blue here? The big blue window. This. Oh. These are the doors. These are the doors into the, the new doors into the lower level. As you may have noticed, um, all the entry doors in the building are painted this blue. So again, it's an, it's an effort to, um, to make these entries equivalent to the other main doors. Um, again, the, to, to make it um, so that the users of this are, are on the same footing as the other users of the building. You're not going to replicate the door to the right, in other words. Uh, this this door to the right? No. Yeah. No, th this this is the door to the elevator. So it's different. This really is a is a disused door into a small compartment in the school. Um, so we want to make a distinction because as you come down, you know, there's there's two doors, you know, the lady or the tiger, but you know, the having glass in this door um, allows the light um, from inside to sort of stream out and makes a distinction and we think makes a more sort of welcoming access point um, for the for the elevator whereas this one is you know it's opaque um, it's a little more forbidding we think the one on the right is a little more um, appealing and attractive and would sort of signal that that's the, the primary access all right we do have some questions um, so Michelle and uh, Mark and Clary, and then Madeline also. So yeah, Michelle, I, I forgot to lower my hand from before. <laughs> okay, sorry, that's quickie. All right, Mark, <laughs> I am unmuted. Okay, thanks. Um, one of the problems with the existing fabric um, awning is that birds congregate, and you can fill in the blanks. Um, how does that get addressed um, with the um, with with the canopy that you're proposing? Well, we have, we, we have gutters all around. So there's a gutter, I don't know if we show it in the detail. Yeah, there's a, there are gutters. So it can be, it can be uh, hosed down. Um, and it's not something, I mean, the, the birds, um, they don't like to stand on glass. So I don't think that they will perch here. Um, so, and it, and it can be washed from the windows above. So um, you're right, it will, it will take some maintenance, um, but, um, but we think to, to um, lighten that area and not create that sort of dark cave-like feeling, that's, that's uh, again, sort of an important part of the stewardship of, the, of this building and the achievement of this objective. All right, let's, uh, Madeline, Madeline, why don't you ask your question and then Clary. Okay, um, I don't know if it's so much of a question, but um, I plan to approve this. However, um, I, I, I wanted to say, um, I'm a longtime member of St. Michael's Church. I was baptized in the church. Uh, my sister was married, my mother's funeral uh, my friend's funeral. So I, I want to say this is this is long overdue. I've been thinking about this for many years. I've been in and out of St. Michael's as a parishioner, and I'm, I'm back, uh, afraid of COVID, but I'm back. And these are changes that, uh, like he was saying, um, I remember things from when I was a little girl. Uh, not, not a lot has changed. Uh, we have the new uh, <laughs> Tiffany windows. We have all of that. But um, in order to bring in the community, I think it's so important what, what uh, John could confirm this for me, but the community needs to be more engaged with the church, but no one knows the church is there. People can't get in. And uh, there's all sorts of problems that keeps this church from thriving as it should be, as it did when I was a child. So I'm hoping that everybody approves this because this is a, a great uh, addition to St. Michael's. I'm so happy. I didn't know you guys were doing this. So I'm really proud of you guys really uh, trying to bring uh, St. Michael's up to where it should be. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you, Madeline. Clary? Yes, thank you. 
Right. Um, so, I mean, this whole complex is such a gorgeous landmark mm. and the whole project I think is fantastic and wonderful and I will vote to approve. I have just one question I was a little confused about. Um, I thought somewhere in a label or in a uh, discussion you referred to a skylight. I understand the uh, glass canopy. But yes, we're, is... we're coming to the skylight next. Oh, okay. We haven't talked about the skylight yet. You, 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 you're absolutely right. Okay. <laughs> That's coming. All right. I thought maybe it was another word for the same thing, but it no, no, two two different things. And okay, we're thank yes. you. And Susan, was that your Stu? Or you're okay now? No, I, I thought the presentation was done. I'm so sorry. Oh, okay. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. wait, there's more. <laughs> there's more. As a, um, as a palate cleanser, let me just say that um, what a difference a week makes. Yes. Um, oh. Um, I, it's rude to ask how much this costs, but I just cannot. I, I can't even, it's mind boggling the amount of care that's gone into this. And I'm, I'm really, really touched by it. It's really, it's a beautiful facility and it's just really heartbreaking that more, more organizations don't have the, the resources to do this. You and should go in there. It's beautiful. Yeah, and, it, and it really is church. extraordinary. But we got a church for you to buy. <laughs> <laughs> well, Susan, I think uh, land right, uh, land uh, air rights, air rights, air rights uh, make quite a bit of difference in St. Michael's case. So. Who yeah, knows? One, one, one church at a time. I, 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 I will <laughs> say that uh, in order to do this, it's taken not just a lot of architectural planning and pro programmatic planning, but some really uh, uh, heart searching financial planning, too. You know, we, we feel that we have a limited window because of a number of circumstances affecting our, our finances and now's the time that we can do this. And I'm, I'm not sure we could do it in the future uh, 10 years from now. I wish we'd done it last year, but uh, things are what they are. That's okay. The other thing I want to mention is that um, my, my dad had Parkinson's, my father-in-law had Parkinson's, my grandfather had it. And I'm, I'm really touched by the, the graciousness with which you're approaching um, mobility issues and the need to have a, an entrance that is, um, you know, on a par with, with the main entrances for everyone. Didn't so yeah. have to be coming in a back door. Thank you very much for that. All right. Lead on. Okay. Next. So this is the skylight that was just referred to. Um, in the lower right, uh, so the building on the right is the church. This is Amsterdam again, and this is 99th Street at the bottom. This is the sanctuary itself, and this is the parish house. Right now, there's there's largely a, a sort of a dead space between them. Um, there's a tiny access at the south end, and there's a, a slightly more extensive uh, connection at the at the north end. And then there's something called the Bridge of Size, which connects the second floor to the to the choir loft. Um, the all the other the photographs here are the sort of roof roofscape. Um, showing it, maybe the best are 11 and 12. So 11 is looking at that slot, uh, uh, looking north, um, the parish house on the left, and the roof of the side aisle of the church on the right. And then number 12 is looking south with the side aisle of the church on the left and the uh, parish house wall on the right. You can see it's, it's, it's pretty much just leftover space. Um, so here's some drawings. The probably the most informative one is the is the cross section in the upper right, um, the church on the right, and the parish house on the left. And then this is the subject skylight, the sloped uh, piece uh, connecting the two. So it creates a new space for the for the church. It it really and then conceptually it it, it marries the sort of spiritual side with the with the mission, which is largely, um, you know, followed in the parish house, the sort of earthly mission. So, so it, there's there's much more communication between those two parts of the church than there than there probably was at the outset. Um, and this is really a reflection, or a physical reflection of that, um, you know, ongoing linkage. Um, it also provides a new way. There's a there's a bridge crossing it from the choir room. To the, um, to the choir loft. So we can now have a sort of an open bridge between them. Um, 
So it does, does um, and then here's that bridge in, uh, in cross section. So this is the north south section, looking at the wall of the parish house, which again is, is you know, we're restoring those windows. So it should be, it should be a lively, useful, and interesting space that connects the two, two parts of the church. And this kind of becomes interior space. It, exactly. So here it is on the left. Um, there is a small connector down here on the first floor only. And then just beyond, you can see what's called the bridge of size, which connects the second floor to the choir loft. It's, it's a little ad hoc. Um, <laughs> um, plywood uninsulated. It's a little chilly in the winter. Very um, ad hoc. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this is the proposed space. So again, it does become interior space. Um, it provides usable space on the ground floor, access to various parts of the sanctuary and to the parish house, and then provides this. Um, actually, also, what had not been uh, uh, a handicapped accessible bridge, there are steps up and down in it. Um, we now have um, ADA accessibility to the choir loft um, from the parish house. So the elevator, which serves the second floor of the parish house, actually connects up to the um, choir loft as well for those who are, again, mobility challenged. So it, it does provide that, that route as well. Um, so all levels of the sanctuary as well as the parish house are connected to the elevator. All right, beautiful. Madeline, you have a, a hand up? I'm not sure. I, I might want to ask it at the end, and I'm not sure where sure. you're going with this. <laughs> okay, I guess. We'll okay, right sorry. This is this is the next to last item. So okay, we're almost there. <laughs> um, any other questions about this? Looks great. Okay. So the last item is the gates, um, mm -hmm. uh, and th and that is is the gates in the uh, south uh, fence, south facing fence of the garden. This is again 99th street at the, at the bottom of this slide. Um, it's these two gates we're talking about now. Um, and just a reminder that the original parish house you know, didn't actually have gates um, and it had a very different fence, um, much more sort of porous uh, fence here. Um, so, so we are keeping the existing, so above you see the existing um, fence and the gates and, and the fence. We're keeping the fence. Um, you know, it's a pretty extensive project to, to replace all that. But the, but the gates, it's necessary to change them because we have the step at the sidewalk um, and painted bright caution yellow reminds you of what a hazard it is for everybody, maybe not just those, those who are mobility challenged. So we do need to bring this down to sidewalk level um, and that means the gates have to be changed. So, so the opportunity was taken to create a much, again, a much more welcoming gate. Um, these are pretty utilitarian. Um, there is a crossbar across the top here, which means you have to take your, your umbrella down when you go through. Um, so, so we created an arched shape, which, um, which reflects the Romanesque arches in the, in the parish house itself. Um, and then we scoop the top of the gate down um, so that you could actually, as you're walking by, you can look through it and over it. So they, they're meant to be as sort of uh, as welcoming an invitation as possible and still provide you know, some kind of closure. Um, and then we also um, introduced lighting into them. So you know, on those um, winter afternoons or, or, or mornings, there'll be a pool of light here at the entrance, again, sort of signaling the entrance, warming it up, um, making it an inviting and welcoming um, place to be rather than um, perhaps something that's a little, a little more forbidding with its step and its, you know, its height. So, um, so that's the intention here. I think the, I think the, again, the fence, the gates, the wall um, were later additions. Um, so, um, we're feeling comfortable making some improvements here. And then um, this is it in the overall elevation. Um, and that, that is the last of the images. 
Um, so just wanted to recap briefly that the, you know, we're, we're really, um, the purpose of the project is really creating accessible routes into the sanctuary in the parish house. That's really um, generated uh, most of these, these improvements and changes. Um, we are also um, addressing some deferred maintenance as part of the project. Those windows in, the, um, in that atrium space will be restored. Um, and as I mentioned, we are providing new storm piping and other piping in the building. Um, you know, it's, again, it's, it's 100, probably 100 years old and um, that, so that needs to be done as well. Important part of the continuing maintenance of the building. Um, and then the aspirations really John talked about, um, you know, the value and the virtue of the buildings, you know, we're um, particularly attuned to the architectural aspects, um, but um, their, their, their impact on the community and their usefulness to the community is, is very much a part of the aspiration of this project. Um, and as John said, you know, every institution needs to evolve to stay healthy. And um, the St. Michael's, I will say, um, their willingness to, to embrace the future and to, and to provide for the future of their congregation, their, their many not-for-profit tenants, um, and the community at large is, is you know, sort of impressive part of the mission and, and the vigor with which they, they approach it. So, so it's, we see this as a, a sort of linchpin of, of a very important forward-looking um, uh, institution. So that's, that's the presentation, that's the scope. Right. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. I'm All ready right. now. <laughs> now Madeline's ready, okay. <laughs> I have a question. Okay. Um, how long do you think, once we approve it, uh, will be finished for the simple fact is, uh, John, I don't know if you know this, I am the last oldest person parishioner in St. Michael's Church. So I want to see these improvements before I die. <laughs> you know, um, I was there as a kid. I want to see them before I go. So what's the timeline? Well, you know, I, I have to point out, Madeline, that Debbie Humphreys has been there at least 55 years. And I've been there 65. Okay, you got to be with that. All right. right. So the, the plan is that... Um, we, we actually got the request or, or the notification from Landmarks uh, only, was it last week or the week before yeah, that this last week, had to yeah. be part of the process. Uh, otherwise, we would have come to the board uh, earlier. Um, our, we, we have a construction schedule that is keyed to the schedule of the schools. You know, we have the, our tenants and we want to minimize uh, disruption to the tenants. And so there's certain work like installing the elevator shaft that needs to be done uh, during certain summer breaks. So we, we want to be doing, uh, you know, we, we'd like to start the digging next month. Madeline, you got a lot of years. We're not. Yeah. Yeah, and and I I think uh, what it's a year and a half estimated construction schedule. Uh, mm, hopefully, a little bit less than that. Yep. Um, so, 14, 14 to sixteen months. So. so so Madeline, I think you'll you'll live to see the uh, the completion of this phase. You know, there there are other things that we we'd like to do, but this is by far the most ambitious. And um, I'll be in church every Sunday to make sure this is going forward. <laughs> uh, okay. yeah. Watch out, John. All we, right. I think Clary. I'll pray. Uh, will be a part of it. Clary uh, and Mark. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Madeline is a tough act to follow. Glad to see you with us tonight, Madeline. Um, two questions. One, is it correct that the skylight is not visible from any public way? That's correct. I thought so. And second, the garden. The gates are going to be open when, how, during the day or not? They're, or? they're typically uh, left open, aren't they, John, during, yeah. during the day? The, 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 the gates are uh, open all day, every day, typically, as, you know, as I said, I mean, this is a seven days a week uh, building, so you, you've got people 
uh, tenants that need to come in and out. There are two schools and other other programs that are that are, that are happening in addition to the church programs. And we hope to uh, be able to use the hall, the performance hall, more uh, when this is done. The the gates are closed at night. Okay, thanks. I guess I can only say that I hope that whatever mechanism or chain or whatever you use to lock the gates will be as elegant as uh, the gates themselves. But thanks. The, actually, there is a there is these little holes are the lock set, so it's 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 not chained. It, it'll be integral to the to the to the gate design. So lovely. All right, Mark. Thank you. Um, I, I should start this off by saying that I was married in this church. Um, I consider John a friend, and if you give him enough wine, he might acknowledge I am his. Um, <laughs> I taught Sunday school in this church for 10 years um, and was a member of the vestry at a time at which they had nowhere near the funds to even contemplate all of this wonderful work. Um, but I've been estranged from the church for about four or five years, uh, which is a reflection on me, not the church. Um, and so I feel as though I am able to vote on this, but I think I should declare that history just so in case between now and full board, the chairs of the committee want to take me aside and say, what in the world were you thinking? We can have that conversation. Um, so uh, with that declaration and my intention to vote, um, unless overruled by somebody smarter, um, uh, I, I would propose a resolution to approve as presented. I would, uh, suggest, and I'm not even going to make this a recommendation, I would suggest that you consider different glass for the left door, the, the west door, than the east door at the bottom of the ramp, uh, just because that big blue sp uh, big blue wall kind of looks kind of funny there. Um, so okay. perhaps, perhaps opaque glass on one side and clear glass on the other, uh, just to break up the mass. Um, okay. But that's just a thought, um, and you can tell by that thought how how far I have to reach in order to come up with something useful to say that you haven't already thought of. Um, uh, the skylight reminds me of the uh, joining of buildings at the Metropolitan Museum, except, exactly. that I, except that I think that it works a little better here than it does there, which is no, uh, <laughs> no, slight, no slight to those folks, the, uh, the Roche and Dinklu guys. Um, um, and so, um, as long as I'm in, uh, as, as long as there's an agreement that I'm in, in, entitled to vote, I would uh, not only vote but ask to uh, render an, uh, 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 a resolution to approve. Thanks. Can I jump in for a minute? Should I? Uh, is it the conflict of interest if I vote? So then, anybody? Madeline, no, according to no. Article 68, according no. to Article 68 in our current bylaws, there is absolutely no reason why you can't vote. Okay. Agreed. Or Mark, or Mark either. And Mark, you don't have a He's problem. He's being gracious. <laughs> um, Madeline, are you a member of the the you know the board? Are you a member vestry? of the official position of the church? Well, I was asked to join the vestry. I'm not on there yet. <laughs> okay, but right now, do you have any official position at the church? No, not at all. You're fine to vote. That's that's what yeah. the that's what, that's, what our, okay. that's what it would say. That's the issue, but thank you for asking. Okay. And Susan's the expert. And Susan, you have a question? Yeah, I just I was curious about um how Madeline, I, I don't want to rush you out the door here, but um, how long will this take to do and how much will it cost? Oh, no, that, we don't care how much it costs. I'm just curious. Yeah. Really? So, we need it, business? Susan. No, no, I'm just curious. You don't have to answer yeah, so, so we think, you know, it would be in the 14 to 16 month range for the okay. construction period. And as, as John said, you know, we're anxious to get going because there is work we have to get done over the summer. Um, so that the school can school can move in. So we do want to start promptly and, and be done, you know, hopefully within 16, 16, 14 to 16 months from now. And are you on the calendar yet at LPC? We are. We had the same sort of misapprehension that the I think the first group did. We, we thought your meeting was on the first. So we're, we're on the June 7th calendar is, is our understanding. I, I suggest we do the same thing. Oh and no follow problem. the committee resolution. If you can do that, that would be great. I mean, yeah. every week is sort of precious to us. Really. Yeah, of course, we can do um, that. All right, thank you. Um, Jay? Yeah, I, I, just quickly, I'm, I'm obviously I'm gonna vote to approve it, but I just wanted to add my agreement to what Mark said 
about the solid uh, blue door. Uh, I'd like to see that be more akin to the door on the right. Uh, okay. With some, that was my point. Maybe oh, even no. maybe no. even duplicative. I I don't see any reason not to do it, and I think it'll look a hell of a lot better to be civil about it. But not as a recommendation, just as a suggestion. No, no, just as an opinion. Okay, thank you. Okay, all right, thank you. All right, uh, Peter. Both? Yeah, Peter Anson had a question. Or um, actually, I just wanted to jump in on mm -hmm. Mark's mm -hmm. comment and now Jay's that um. I helped put in that door for basic trust um, back 25 years ago. Um, and the idea was to bring light into the hallway and to allow um, people to, their kids to see who was at the door. And it just made it much more accessible. Um, I, not to say that you should not do what you're doing. I, I, St. Michael's has been a great place for the community and um, I look forward to your work and, and being able to visit it. So just wanted to mention that. Thanks. Thank you. Peter. Thank you. I think we're moving towards the vote. Unless Clary, do you have, you have your hand up? Do you have something else that you want to ask? Or you Sorry, I had to unmute. No, that was my mistake of not taking it down. Thanks. Okay, great. All right, Michelle, I think we're, we're probably ready to move. So I'll take the vote. Uh, Madge? Yes, and I like the blue doors. Uh, Jay? I, I assume we're vote, voting on a motion to approve as motion to approve. Yes, sir. Uh, Jay? Yes. And I'm a yes. Uh, is Josh still here? Yes. Thank you. Yes and yes. Okay. Uh, Susan Schwartz? A yes in capital letters. Clary? Um, also, yes. As I understand it, we're not even if the resolution will not have a recommendation that some kind of fenestration go into that left-hand door, because I would vote for it either way, but I just want to be clear on what we're voting on. It is not a recommendation to add fenestration. That was a suggestion. I think it's a good idea to have it as a recommendation. We'd all vote for, I mean, those of us who are voting yes would vote yes either way, I think, but. Um, anybody want to say anything about a, that as a recommendation? I would not be I, I'm not going to push that issue. I would not. Uh... If I may, um, uh, since I was the one who made the, the first resolution, I would encourage my colleagues not to uh, simply to approve as as um, as presented. I think that we can trust that this architect <laughs> and this vestry will take the comments seriously and do the right thing, whatever they think it is. Um, there are countervailing concerns about spaces about visibility into spaces that, that are occupied by children. So um, I leave it in their good hands and I would encourage others to do the same. I, I would concur with that. And I vote yes as, as is. Okay, hey, thank you. Paige? This is remarkable. Thank heaven for great projects and a wonderful client and the stewardship of this property. Um, I'd like to vote five times, but I don't think it's allowed. So I'll just <laughs> vote once. And yes, you. No, uh, Peter, Peter Sampton. Have a special bylaws thing about that. You can vote as many yeah. times. Yeah. Don't well, get started on well, that. Just throw in four for me tonight, okay? Thank All right. You. Peter Sampton. Yes. Yes. Okay. I'll take pages. Thank heaven. And I'll say hell yes. Yeah. And Mark. <laughs> Mark. Mark is a yes, thank you very much. Okay, so that's unanimous. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, zero, zero, zero. Madeline? 200% yes. Okay, and I don't think there's anybody else from the board. One, zero, zero, zero. Yeah, this was, uh, this was great. Uh, you reaffirmed our faith in preservation kind. Something like well, that. thank you very much for your for your patience um, yeah. and for your for your support. Um, yeah, we've been we've been working on a long time with John and his group, and, and they've been they've been absolutely marvelous. Obviously, we wouldn't have been able to do do it without them. So, yeah, and I think so we learned been, a lot too. Yes, yeah. yeah. we learned a lot tonight. Thank you. It's All like right. a salve. Yeah. Um, thank you. We will see you at uh, LPC on the 7th, probably earlier in the day, and then uh, we'll present the resolution to the, uh, the board at the board meeting that night. With thank, thank you very much. Yeah. All right. Hey.
All right. Thank, thank you, you so much. Have a good evening. Right. You too. Bye -bye. Do we have any new business? No. No? Okay, great. But, uh, let us... <laughs> Mark, did you want to quickly say something about that resolution you circulated? Yes, on the unhappier right. church uh, matter. Um, okay, we'll we'll leave you now. Thank yeah, you. Thank again. you. Yes, well, bye, bye bye. Thank you. We don't want to be part of this one. <laughs> yeah. Um, on 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 that on West Park, um, I circulated with the with the permission of the chairs, uh, but I haven't heard from the co-chairs yet. So, um, and I have so far um, heard comments that I should make it both um, stronger and less strong, or or more aggressive and less aggressive. Um, so I will do my best to take in the, all the comments I get by noon tomorrow and produce another draft, uh, which at what point, um, uh, I guess we would need to circulate it to our, to our, our full board colleagues. Um, mm -hmm. And um, uh, please know that if I didn't take a comment uh, in my revising of it, uh, two things. One is that it's because I'm being, you know, it's still in Charybdis here. Um, but the other is that uh, there's always the opportunity to offer amendments at full board if, if it really doesn't strike as you think it should. Um, uh, my, my, my personal view is that I think that we should um, write a resolution that has the greatest chance of being adopted by the full board. Um, and so that's, if, if I sound mealy, mealy mouth at times on that resolution, that's why. Um, and I'll do my best. But uh, anyway, if anybody wants to say anything now, I'm obviously gonna take notes in here. But given the hour, perhaps uh, uh, there's a glass of wine with your name on it that might have a better profitable use of your time. I have a quick question about um, about the process, Michelle and Kay, at, at full board, if, if no one has a response to Mark. Yeah. OK, um, yeah. just cu curious about how we're going to manage the, um, the comments from the community. I found the community input really valuable, and I, I would be um, concerned if we curtailed that at the full board. I, I'm not sure we need to have three hours of it, but um, right. Yeah. Well, we'll talk uh, to Stephen and Max again, right? Because it was really a, a, a group effort to get through that meeting. I don't know how Stephen feels about this. Maybe he'll ask people who've already said something. You know, their comments are on the record through the minutes. But I don't know. I think pe some people, you're right, are going to want to say, some people who already said something want to say it to the larger. Uh, group it's yeah really, it's really up to Stephen. yeah i just want to put in a word um on behalf of letting letting the community speak on this because it is a big deal and i, I think yeah. it would be a mistake not to yeah i i know what you're saying to me susan um and you're directing it to me <laughs> i'm not i'm directing it to. i'm only kidding i'm only kidding but you're mm -hmm. right the community should be able to be heard on this issue yeah, we'll, we'll uh, Michelle, we'll talk on Monday and we'll talk to Stephen and Max and we'll yeah. make a little plan that, uh, okay. that leaves this things. This is the uh, first open. time we've had a, an issue with a deep community interest and some controversy. We've had it before. And yeah. I suspect we'll have it again. Indeed. And better Stephen than any one of us. Yes. And <laughs> yeah. we learned a lot tonight. <laughs> His knowledge can be applicable to how yeah, we- I, I'm sure he can manage it. Yeah. And, sure and the community will have a, uh, uh, a strong voice as mm -hmm. they usually- I think we can, we can move it through in the right way. But with all of your help. Yeah. Just get a good night's sleep the night before or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> we may be there a while. Too. We'll see you, Jared. <laughs> yes, well, I'm going to uh, take off. Let us adjourn this meeting. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank Excellent Thanks, job. Thanks for your uh, second okay. appearance at a right. reservation meeting this month. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye, everyone. Good night. <laughs>